Welcome everyone to Haven, Kansas, where your Ellenwood Eagles will be facing off tonight with the Haven Wildcats tonight, the fourth game of the season for Ellenwood Eagles at 1-2 and two on the season, trying to go for at 500 against the winless Wildcats tonight. And uh, taking a look back to last week, a 42 to nothing shutout. Uh, Bill Matty, what are your thoughts on that game from last week? Well, it's uh, just a game that uh, you look on the schedule, and, you know, obviously you're trying to win and your kids get up for because it's uh, a rival game. Things don't go your way. Uh, so you move on and know that that's probably going to be one of the better teams you're going to play in, in the uh, regular season. So uh, it's definitely coming down here to Haven, uh, familiar territory for uh, the ones that have been around a while and, and had some success against Haven in the past. And uh, we'll forget about next last week and uh, just worry about tonight. Including last year, a close game last year against Haven where Ellenwood came out the victor. This year, uh, still going to take quite a bit of focus against a Haven team. Both teams pretty similar in the fact that these two teams love to run the football and do it with uh, some pretty good success if the right personnel are in there. Absolutely. I think, you know, you have to look at your uh, line of scrimmage and see who wins the battle up front. And uh, just probably a game where it's probably a matter of uh, what team gets off on the right foot and uh, eliminates those early mistakes. One key factor in this one is uh, in the running game, Bill, is the Patrick Ringring, one of the X factors for this one. Uh, we're going to take a quick break as we're about to do the national anthem. You're listening to Ellenwood Eagles football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. Pit Stop Service Station at 201 East Santa Fe in Ellenwood is your one stop for oil changes, tire repairs, exhaust systems, brakes, transmission work, tune ups, new tires, and more. Open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to noon on Saturday. Pit Stop Service Station, Ellenwood. And during pregame, I mean, that same vibe, it was quiet, no emotion, no fire. And, you know, we, uh, extreme savings at Next Tech Wireless. Now receive $50 off any phone, including the new HTC Merge, the Motorola Milestone Plus, and the HTC 7 Pro. You'll also receive $60 off an additional line. That's six months free. Next Tech Wireless has added more towers, offering even better coverage in Kansas and across the entire United States. Visit your local Next Tech Wireless store for extreme savings throughout the month of September. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, your cover nationwide extreme savings at next tech wireless now receive 50 dollars. welcome back to pregame everyone matt unruh here with uh, ellen wood eagles head coach dusty beams and uh, kind of a rough week last week we talked about it uh during pregame it had to play perfect pretty much against hoisington in order to come out with a victory wasn't exactly a perfect game ended up losing 42 to nothing uh, give me give me a recap of last week, Coach. Oh, we, we played the complete opposite of perfect. <laughs> uh, we played imperfect. Um, you know, the, being new with these guys, you know, uh, it was one of those deals where it just the vibe wasn't there all week in practice. Mm. Uh, we almost, I think we mistook it for confidence. And during pregame, I mean, that same vibe, it was quiet, no emotion, no fire. Mm. And, you know, we, uh, Poison comes out, fumbles the ball. We we manage a small drive before we, you know, they give it up on fourth down and they start going down. And Cameron Williams makes a great hit down on our side and nothing. No cheering, no high fiving, and right then I mean, it's kinda like it's gonna be a long night. Hmm. So uh yeah. Not very good in our favor. So you guys were looking for a little bit of a spark. Although you, you mentioned the fumble, Coach. There was at least five fumbles that Ellenwood recovered in the first half yet didn't come up with mm -hmm. a, yeah. Now, were those fumbles mainly caused by Hoisington, or do you think it was mainly your boys putting a helmet on the ball? Um, two of them were Hoisington. I mean, just dropping them. Uh, two of them on the other side, I know, watching on film, they were us ripping the ball loose. Uh, that brings up a good point. I mean, in three games, we've turned the ball over twice. I think, and compared to, I think, nine, maybe even more going the other way. So our ball control this year has been a lot better. But if that doesn't give you a W, I mean, it really, in the long run, it doesn't really stand for much. So Yeah, the ratio on turnover seems to be in your favor. It's just a matter of executing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Patrick Ringering went down into the first quarter. Probably had a, a large effect offensively and, well, all around, offensively, defensively. He's the punter. 
Um, what's his status for this week? You and what what exactly happened, by the way? Uh, got hit in the ribs, and it said it just uh, I don't know if it's tore or strained some muscles in the rib area. Um, I don't know the number of. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but it it was bad supposedly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Patrick doesn't go down very easily. Uh, he will be back Friday, but like you said, he's our speed guy. Mm-hmm. And when you take away our speed guy, you kind of take away about half our offense. And when the other half can't pound the ball, then you take away all our offense. Uh, defensively, once Patrick left, we did all right with our secondary, but there were a few times where we didn't get aligned properly, and that hurt us. Uh, we saw what it was like without Patrick, and it's not fun. Yeah, and it seemed like, uh, well, First of all, Patrick Ringering, kind of funny that Tony Romo pretty much has the same type of injuries the following week, copying Patrick Ringering. But besides that, besides the point, um, <laughs> now uh, offensive line faced a bigger group in Hoisington this week. How is how's their confidence this week uh, going into uh, against Haven after having a good push the past uh, first the first two games? Um, well, basically after the Hoisington game, I mean we're starting back. And I say it's every single week, but once again, we've got to start all over. You know, uh, that they were physical, but I don't think they were that much better than us. I think we beat ourselves up here um, this week. I mean, we've got to treat it like a hoist team. We've got to treat it like you know the best line we ever had because if we come out like we did last week, it's going to be you know it'll be an upset. Well, coach, let's talk a little bit about Haven. What's what's the scouting report on them, and how how's their season been so far? Um, they have not won a game yet. They run the same offense that we saw week two that Larned runs. Um, misdirection, uh, a lot of deceptive plays. Uh, you know, it's one of those teams that the scary thing is they have absolutely nothing to lose. Um, to us, that's, I mean, the kids might not see this. We've been trying to pump it in their heads all week. But they're a team that has nothing to lose. And they're going to come out. They might come out with a completely different offense. They might come out with different sets. We have to be ready for everything. Um, we have to treat it just like we would any other game. Well, what's it going to take for uh, a W this weekend on the road in Haven? Uh, we've definitely got a rebound from last week. That's that's a must. Um, we've got to see some success up the middle. Whether they're blitzing, whether they have 10 guys in a box, we have to see some success run the ball. Um, we're also going to try to air it out a little bit more this week. Uh, Try to get some. Try to get some of our better athletes in space. So, and defensively, we've got to be assignment sound because we were not even close last week. And what's practice been like this week, Coach? Uh, last night was probably the best. I probably the best practice we've had all year. Wow. Um, we really cranked up the tempo. Uh, we switched up some different positions with some of the coaches. We uh, just main thing was we we told them we said we've got to. You know, some of the heads were hanging after last week, and we said we've got to go above and beyond. So. We picked up the tempo, and it felt like it was one of the fastest practices, which it wasn't, but maybe just the energy level. So. Well, that's what you're talking about in the Hoisington game, a little more passion, a little more energy on the field, and hopefully that's what the Eagles will bring uh, tonight. We'll be back with more pregame after this. Eastern Plumbing, Electric, Heating, and Air is your authorized carrier dealer. Residential or commercial, Eastern can service and repair all makes and models. Call 620-564-3377. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Eastern in Ellenwood. For generations, Ellenwood residents have counted on the Ellenwood Leader for news and information about the community. The Leader and the Central Kansas Rocket cover the topics that are important to residents of Eastern Barton County. Start your subscription today or pick up the latest copy at the Ellenwood Leader office. The Rocket is free. Armax Truck and Equipment is your bumper-to-bumper auto parts store specializing in truck repair and parts. Armax Truck and Equipment is a proud supporter of the Ellenwood Eagles academics and sports. For truck repair and parts, see Armax Truck and Equipment, Ellenwood. Welcome back as we're doing a coin toss currently, a commemorative coin toss here tonight in honor of a Ronald Reagan's birth, the centennial of Ronald Reagan's birth here tonight uh something that's going uh, going on across kansas tonight homecoming night here in haven as well it's the haven wildcats taking on your ellenwood eagles i'm matt under alongside bill maddie and 
Ellenwood Eagle football, first of all, brought to you by USD 355, Ellenwood Farmers Mutual Jensen Insurance, National Billing, RMAC, and Ellenwood Booster Club. A few of the fine sponsors bringing you Ellenwood Eagle football here on IllinoisEagles.org and Great Bend Post. Dot com. A matchup of a pair of running games and a, a pair of teams that have kind of struggled to stop the run at times. It's been kind of the, the defense has been the Achilles heel of both of these clubs so far, it seems like. Well, it's just uh, a matter of which team's going to make some stops tonight. It's probably going to be the victor. Probably. I think uh, just a matter of whichever team gets the running game, game going and uh, also the, the uh, turnovers have a big part of the game so we'll see Peter if uh, the Illinois Eagles can come get a little advantage of that uh, and uh, maybe get some pizza. some early turnovers now going back to the last game Patrick Ringo ring injured in the end of the first quarter uh, from what we heard from coach Dusty beams in pregame sounds like he will be back tonight ready to go well whether he's gonna be a hundred percent or not that's that's a question but oh what needs him to get going and maybe find another factor another uh, X factor to come in to balance out that offense here tonight as well. Absolutely, Patrick Greenery makes the Ellenwood offense much more potent. Gives us that uh, big playability that uh, I think about only he can provide. We got you know some other guys that can pound the ball up the middle, but we need Patrick's speed to get around the outside and, and be a threat and make those uh, defensive backs and linebackers uh, play on us and, and not just crowd the line of scrimmage inside the box on us. And defensively, well, you got to be prepared for the run with this Haven team. One of their key players would be Trey Regeer, running back that can put up some uh, big plays. Had a 76-yard run back uh, earlier this season. He can be kind of like Patrick Ringering. He's a, a big play kind of guy. Watch out for number two here tonight. Looks like we're about set for kickoff this evening here in uh, Haven. Haven a winless squad, but, man, they look like they got some – Plenty of death coming off the bench. Uh, uh, over 50 kids coming out this year for football for Haven. They sure do. It looks like uh, Mr. Neinstedt, the Haven principal, the old uh, football coach, was out in the middle of the field. Uh, I don't know if he's paying the referees a little cash for the game or what that was about. I don't. You don't even see that. We'll wait and see. As this one is underway, ring a ring, taking this one back. As we said, he's back in action, going around the right side, getting a nice block there from Marcus Brown and pushed out of nearly out of bounds. At about the 31 yard line here tonight. First time we've seen the uh, Eagles set up the wall on the uh, kickoff, but of course I think that's probably one of the best kickoffs we've seen all year as well. But Ellenwood setting up the uh, the wall on the sideline has set up pretty well. Not too bad of a return to start the game off. Yeah, and uh, about the 30 yard line to start off this drive, and it'd be nice for Ellenwood to get off to a quick start, especially after not getting on the board at all. Last game against Hoisington, Jared Olke under center. Hands off, Marcus Brown up the left side, but caught from behind. Uh, looks like a no game for that one. A good pursuit by the Haven defense. Looked like the uh, hole was there early, just kind of a little bit slow developing, but I but I like what I saw there. There was a hole early on. I think it could have hit it a little bit sooner. We would have had it. Might be a, a different story here tonight then from last week with the offensive line bill is Hoisington had a pretty good size advantage on the uh, line of scrimmage uh, last week in Ellenwood and uh, Ellenwood's done a pretty nice job other than the Hoisington game of winning the battle at the line of scrimmage a little split back toss back to ring a ring explodes up the middle as he sees a hole but brought down for a gain of about five yards and well, that's all you ask for a kid a gain of five that's a pretty good run for second down yeah, I think it's be important for Patrick to get out and you know get a few hits under his belt just so you kind of get back in a little bit of game shape there and know that you can take a hit and, and uh, you're going to live the next play and go on. Good run there by Patrick. So third and about four for Ellenwood, trying to keep this drive alive. Olke under center, split backs. He'll hand off to Marcus Brown, wrapped up uh, near the first down marker. Might, get, might be a little short, depending on where they spot this one. Looks to be like he had to get to the 40 exactly. I think he's about a half yard short. Early decision right here for Coach Beam. Uh, it's be interesting what he does right here. About fourth and one on this one. I haven't really seen a QB sneak right up the middle, but this might warrant something like that here on the 39-yard line. And it looks like a timeout going to be taken by Haven. They did not like what they saw on the other side of the football. Timeout called by the 
I think they're a little bit confused on whether Ellen was going to go for it or punt and uh, had uh, too many men out there, so they are forced to call timeout early in the game. 10.02 left in the first quarter. We'll take a quick break. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagle football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. When you need a state-certified master electrician, call Triple T Electric. Triple T Electric can handle your electrical needs, whether it's residential, commercial, farm, irrigation, or oil field. Triple T Electric in Ellenwood is a proud supporter of Ellenwood Sports. Highlay Engine Pump and Supply salutes all students at Ellenwood High. Go Eagles from everyone at Highlay Engine Pump and Supply in Ellenwood. They are, so we are. We're ready. And we're back. Fourth and inches for Ellenwood on their first set of downs. Trying to keep this first drive alive for the Eagles. Olke under center. Takes a snap. He'll push forward. Gets a gain of about three yards, and that's enough for the first down. Jared views his head right there. Saw there was a gap on that uh, right side. Step back and step, kind of let the play develop just a little bit. Squeezes through easily for the first down. That's probably a pretty good play for him because he is short enough. Some of those linebackers probably have a hard time seeing him. Yeah, absolutely, and found a nice little hole there too. A good push by the offensive line. First and ten. A little fake handoff, and wow, swallow, oh, escaping one tackle. Olke still standing, but still pushed back. And uh, that's going to be a big loss for the Eagles. Loss of about nearly 15 yards. Oh, no, they're going to mark him down at about the 38-yard line. So, or the 33-yard uh, line. Loss of about 10 for Olke on that play. Like uh, Jerry was going to run the boot play off of that uh, defensive end on this side, sniffed that out right away, and, and he's really the only person that can make the play on that, but and he, and he sure did. Olke's still under center with the second and long. They'll hand off Noah, a little reverse to ring a ring. Round the outside, he's got the corner. Gets up to where they originally started and more. Nearly the 50 yard line, about to the 50, 49 yard line, so a gain of 10 for ring a ring. And it's good to see him in there once again for the Eagles. Absolutely nice run. Good blocking downfield by uh, Cody Ezer. Nice job of blocking that defensive back. Uh, probably just maybe one more guy, and he's maybe scores a touchdown on that play. Now, uh, much more doable third down. And, yeah, you're right. If he would have broke uh, one or two more tackles there and got around the corner maybe a little quicker, could have gotten past the defense on that play. Third and about four for the Eagles. Just uh, short of... Haven territory. Olke getting another, doing a screen pass to the left. Ring a ring. Shakes one defender, shakes another. Might have enough for the first down. Nice move by Ring a ring. Might be a gain of five, and I believe they're going to move the markers. A little uh, screen pass up there to Patrick. Good job blocking and an excellent job of uh, by Patrick of making the first guy miss. And once you get the first guy to miss on that play, you're probably going to gain five or six yards just like you did. This might be something that Haven did not see in the scouting report, at least from the Hoisington game. Olke most likely going to throw the ball a little bit more in this one, as said by Coach Dusty Beams in pregame. Going to give the sophomore a few more opportunities to use his arm. Just want a direct handoff. Looks like Templeton getting in on the action there. Looks like Coach Beam is using um, some shifts in his, uh, on the offensive part. Early line up in one set before they snap it. Shifts. We've got two or three guys moving. Shift to another spot. Uh, comes out there before the defense can actually uh, change maybe what they had called. And maybe a little bit of communication problem on the defensive part. Yeah, it keeps them guessing, that's for sure. Second and three. See if they go with the run again. Uh, pitch back. Over to Brown, but he's always oh, he's pushes down the defender. And marches forward, possibly for a first down. Gain of about four for Brown. What strength shown by Brown, Brown on that play? About Hendrickson looked like he had a good grasp on him, but Brown said no. That was a nice play by uh, by Marcus because the kid came up there, make the play on him early in the uh, in the early in the play and made him miss and uh, almost gets a first down. Oh yeah, I guess they did mark him just shy of the first down marker. But man, that puts him in a heck of a lot better position. Would have been a loss of. A few yards out, he'd been brought down right away. Brown over to the left side, gets a hole, pushes forward, enough for the first down. Marcus 
That's effective. That's right, Matt. We've played, uh, what, almost uh, five, six minutes in this uh, first quarter, and Haven has not touched football yet. That's a great job by Ellenwood. Being patient, do what they do. Try to eliminate your mistakes. Go down chunks at a time. We'll see if we can pop a big play here. Been a nice drive starting from about the 30-yard line, already down near the Haven 30-yard line. Oh, and flags on the play might be a little false start here. I don't believe we had everybody set and start off. The, oh, no, offside. encroachment. Offside against Haven. All right. Is the penalty. Five-yard penalty. Be so make it first and five for five the Eagles. At the 29. Now they're inside the 30-yard line. Eagles keep the ball moving. This time thanks to the Wildcats. Wildcats, by the way, in the black and gold trim with the white lettering. Ellen Wood in the white jerseys, red pants, red lettering, blue helmets. Got to see the uh, new red uniforms last week with the first home game. And bursting up the middle, oh, a flag on the play as that's Churchill falling forward for a big game. Nice play by Cold. We uh, saw him a lot against the, the uh, Larned Indians and... Uh, Looks like we're going to have a face mask to uh, attack a little bit more on at the end of that run. About a 14-yard run for Churchill on that one. His first carry of this one, and yeah, now they're definitely in the red zone. This has been a pretty easy going so far on this really first drive. It really has. Dri you know, four, five, six yards of play, and it's exactly what Ellen wants to do right now. And then a couple gifts from the Haven defense as well. This has been a long time that Haven's been on the uh, field for with defense, which, you know, the number of players they have on the field, I doubt they're going to have as many guys going both ways. So uh, good to keep the defense on the field as long as possible. Ring-a-ring, -ring, going around the right side, cuts the corner in the end zone. Ellenwood Eagles with the first score of the ball game. 11-yard touchdown run for Patrick Ring-a-ring -ring on his fourth carry of the day. 6 nothing now, and uh, probably go for two as they usually have. Looks like we had a personal five after play, so I don't know if they're going to – they might uh... – Give a little bit closer here on the extra point. Now we're going to take it on the uh, on the kickoff. On the kickoff. There, huh? I'm not. Well, I see what they decide here. Well, the referee still hasn't picked up his flag. He's got to call the penalty there, and it looks like it is a personal no, foul. Per personal foul against Payman. Yeah. Marked off on the kickoff. Yeah, it will be marked off on the kickoff. Oh, that's a uh, that's a big play right there. She's about 15 yards on the kickoff. Uh, we should have. Uh, pretty good chance of putting the ball in the end zone. Now this drive, lasting nearly six minutes, start out with 12 minutes a quarter, right, Bill? That's right. Uh, 6.20 left in this first quarter and took five minutes and 40 seconds for Ellenwood to get their first touchdown and see if they can get the two-point conversion. Hand off Marcus Brown, a good push, and wasn't even touched until he crossed the end zone. Mark. Brown with the easy two, and that puts Ellenwood up 8 to nothing with 6.20 left in the first quarter up on Haven. We'll take a break. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagles football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. Extreme savings at Next Tech Wireless. Now receive $50 off any phone, including the new HTC Merge, the Motorola Milestone Plus, and the HTC 7 Pro. You'll also receive $60 off an additional line. That's six months free. Next Tech Wireless has added more towers, offering even better coverage in Kansas and across the entire United States. Visit your local Next Tech Wireless store for extreme savings throughout the month of September. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, you're covered nationwide. Cheyenne Trailer Sales has all sizes and models of trailers from Diamond T heavy haulers, car haulers, hydraulic dump trailers and cargo trailers, stock trailers, utility trailers. Central Kansas Trailer Supermarket is Cheyenne Trailer Sales, located in Great Bend and Ellenwood. Dr. Christopher Brown, along with Dr. Charlie Jocelyn, is now accepting new patients at the Ellenwood Hospital Clinic. The Ellenwood Hospital Clinic is fully staffed Monday through Friday to promote your good health. Well, Ellenwood scoring on their first drive of the night, and it uh, seemed like everybody got some uh, touches with the football on that one, and everyone's seen some success on that last drive, Bill. Yeah, that was a great way to start the football game. Now we're kicking off from their 45. I'm not sure that I've ever seen this before. Wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised right now if Coach Beam doesn't kick an onside kick just because you're not giving up very much. Marcus right Brown off. kicking off for the nope. Eagles. Uh, he's just going to try and pin him at the 20. 
don't yep. get the chance to do that very often. No, you so. don't. You don't see that very often. <laughs> In high school football, usually don't have enough leg to get it clear back to the end zone to force a touchback, but this will put Haven back at the 20 automatically to start their first drive. The T's still on the field here, here Bill. Maybe the, the T boy forgot where the uh, T's supposed to be. Yeah, I think that's usually uh, I think it's usually Brandon's job, but I'm not sure <laughs> if that's... I better be careful. I'm not sure if that's his job tonight or not. Well, hopefully Ellenwood keeps him far back and there that the go. T's not a factor. T at the 45, Haven at the 20. Little pitch back, a run, and off to the corner. That's their big running back, Trey Regeer. Off to the races, up the sideline. Ring Ring, the only one that has a chance to catch him, but he's going to make it all the way to the end zone. An 80-yard run to start things off for Haven. We were talking about it during pregame, Coach uh, Bill Matty, that this kid can make the big plays in an 80 yard run to start this one off for the touchdown yeah that's uh boy that really takes this went out of our sales off uh, uh dominating the first part of that quarter and then boom just right back that's the way football is big plays can uh, definitely kill you well now they know if they didn't see it in the scouting report before which i'm sure they did regeer would be the guy to watch and around the corner apparently Got some good blocks on the outside, too, as the field goal up and good for number 19, Tyler Schultz. The extra point is good by Tim Hendrickson out of the hold of, Excuse me. of Colton. Looks um, like that uh, kid's a pretty good Hard kicker. I'm assuming that's why they over. went for uh, for just one there and didn't try to go for, uh, for a tie. And that makes it 8-7. to seven. Ellenwood Ellenwood's eight, still eight, up eight, by seven. one. We'll take a quick break. Ellen, you're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagles football on ellenwoodeagles.org and grapeinpost.com. Just like the student athletes at Ellenwood High School, Lang Diesel is doing what it takes to get the job done. See all the staff for new products, parts, or service at Lang Diesel, just west of Ellenwood. And good luck, Eagles, from your friends at Lang Diesel. The purpose of the Ellenwood Booster Club is to serve all students and faculty of Ellenwood Middle and High School by promoting participation in all activities while enhancing school pride and spirit. If you would like to get involved with the Ellenwood Booster Club, please contact any Ellenwood Booster Club member. Calling all businesses large or small, National Billing is your accounts receivable processing, billing, financing, and management headquarters. See Mel Wade and the staff at National Billing, 13 North Main in Ellenwood, a proud sponsor of Ellenwood Eagle Activities. Well, Haven answering back right away. The first play of their offensive drive. Uh, that'd be Trey Regeer with the 80-yard touchdown run back. And it's it's uh, Ezer with a run. Off the return, he's brought down about the 22-yard line. Tried to get around and change direction, go out to the right side. Had some room, but Haven pursued him pretty quickly there. Looked like we had the wall set up there on uh, our sideline over there, but uh, Cody just not quick enough to get over there on with that kind of uh, coverage by Haven. Good job of their guys coming down and getting in front of that wall. That was a long uh, five-minute and 40-second drive for Ellenwood. Let's see if they can do it again. Good thing about... Uh, Situation right now, an 8-7 to seven lead for Ellenwood is, well, they're winning time of possession right now. Absolutely. It's, uh... Olke back to throw. Screen pass. Williams left side. Marches up the sideline. Might have enough for the first down, depending on whether they're spotted. They're going to spot him a little bit short to Williams. Down by nice play by Cameron. It's really uh, one of the first times we've seen him all year go up and get a football in his game. area, bring it down, uh, and had a mismatch over there. We'll see if Ellen would continue to take care of uh, some mismatch problems on that passing game. Yeah, let's see if they go back to it a little, back to him a little more through the air. Again, Olke under center. Takes a handoff. It's someone up the middle, and it looks like it's Templeton bursting through the middle. Room to run. He's going to score if he can... Outrun the two defenders. That's going to be a 68-yard score Allen for Allen Templeton. Oh, still got a personal foul penalty back here at about the 50-yard line. Oh, boy. There is a flag on the play. Now, would that result in a replay and uh, march it back another 15 yards from the spot? Yep. Of the foul, or? Yeah, the play was still going on when the referees uh, threw the flag down, so they're going to march it back from right there where they threw it. Ouch. Personal foul against the Eagles. 
So that crosses out a great run by Allen Templeton. Yeah, the uh, both sides of the ball are going to have to make sure they just keep their uh, tempers in check tonight. Looks like we got a veteran officiating crew. They're going to they're going to call it. They've already heard that they can. They're going to throw the flag when they see any unnecessary stuff. So, uh, unfortunate for Allen, what is? Uh, Allen was almost in the end zone. We had the uh, penalty. Well, makes a 68-yard touchdown into more of a seven-yard gain, but they'll start from the. 35-yard line. Wolke hands off to Templeton again. Doesn't have quite the amount of success as last time, but gets about a gain of seven yards. Templeton on the carry, brought down by number 32, Ryan Hines. Brings on a second and seven for the Eagles. Matt, we're uh, giving some sideline shots three. tonight from uh, Cody and Woodruff. Uh, we have uh, Josh Comark upstairs giving you the main shot. We'll try to work back and forth, give you some good camera angles. It's always nice to have the dual camera system. Don't get the one perspective. Olke back to throw. Goes deep, but uh, Williams kind of got tangled up with the defender. Pass from Olke intended That's uh, the really most time I think that uh, Jared's had to throw the football this year. He did a nice job standing in the pocket. You know, you, he's usually Williams. booting out or throwing some kind of a screen pass, but there was a drop back. A lot of time to throw the football, so... Uh, that's good to see. Got a little bit excited on that play and that and Williams getting tangled up with the defender and didn't really see where the ball was coming from as he had his back turn. Brings up a third and three for the Eagles. Gonna hand off a little reverse ring a ring up the right side. Oh, they might have been stopped short there. We'll see where they spotted. TJ Jackwitz with the tackle. Fourth down and one, and see if they go to the same play as they did last time in this pretty much exact same situation, about to midfield, fourth and short. Yeah, Coach Beam's got uh, Jared in the game, so they're going to go for it again, kind of just like we saw a few minutes ago. About 4.05 and counting left in the first quarter. Ellenwood's up 8-7. to seven. Fourth and one. Here's Olke. Hands off to Templeton, and they might have pushed him back behind the line of scrimmage for loss. See where they spot him. It's definitely not going to be a first down. Bout got to the line of scrimmage on that one. Templeton no gain, and uh, Ellenwood loses the football in some decent field position for Haven on this series now. Yeah, our defense now is going to have to show up here and uh, stiffen up and see what they got in them. Definitely got to look for the rear, rear kid to uh, get the football, so Ellen needs to key off of him. Dylan Meyer, their senior quarterback, under center right now. They, they're they known to go with um, Miller and Eric Shive, the junior. It's time a handoff to number 12. That's Fitz and Meyer. He goes around the left-hand side and up for a first down. Dylan Meyer on the handoff. It's like we uh, had a few kids miss him early on. Uh, not sure exactly who it was, but uh, we had him stopped early and, and uh, just didn't wrap up very well. Picks up a gain of about 11. And uh, inside the 30-yard line, about the 29. Haven's got it. 3.30 and counting left in the first quarter. Here's Miller under center. Handoff. Up the middle, that's number 30, Hendrickson, marching up close to the first Hendrickson down marker, a gain of about nine. Yards down to the 21 yard line will be Matt, I was just reminded by two. Ryan Cutter here that uh, our sideline camera is brought to you by H&B Communications. Glad H&B was able to sponsor that so we could have Cody doing something tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> we did feed him tonight at the carriage house on the way down, so we're hoping that- Making him uh, earn his pay. Make, exactly. <laughs> Running around the left side, that's Miller marching into the that's end zone. Haven up now in this one, a 22-yard rush by Dylan Miller. <laughs> Haven getting some momentum going offensively. Ellenwood having a tough time stopping them around the corners. Looks like this could be a scoring fest the way uh, this is going tonight. Ellenwood's defense is going to have to stiffen up and uh, figure some things out and probably make some adjustments here, hopefully at the quarter. Field goal up 
And a little wide left, no good on the field goal. 13-8 lead for Haven now at 2.46 left in the first quarter. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagle football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. When you think of your future, think Barton. When you think of career training, think Barton. When you think about completing your GED or getting specialized training for your business and employees, think of Barton. Find out what drives you at Barton Community College. Thirteen to eight, Haven on top, and we do have a scoring fest here, Bill, Matt, Bill Maddie. And one of the things that Haven's been known for so far this year is gotten a lot of yardage, just haven't put it any points, as many points on the boards as they need to. Not having trouble with that here tonight. It's ring a ring with the return, if you'd like to call it that. Uh, got it about to the thirty-yard line, where Ellenwood will set up shop on their right third drive 16, tonight. Newcomer, number nineteen, Tyler Schultz. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of a tell two stories here. Ellenwood taking their time getting the ball down the, the field and uh, Haven scoring quick. 2.43 left in the first quarter. Ellenwood going to try to get going again. First drive had a five minute and 40 second touchdown drive. It's Churchill up the left side. Almost, if he broke one or two more guys, he'd be off to the races as well. Brought down at the about Eagles. the 34-yard line, 35-yard line for a gain of about six. Yeah, it just seems and like uh, right now Ellen Wick can get five to Wildcats. eight yards of carry and, and Haven with the big plays. It's kind of, a, I think this is going to be a wild, wild night for football. I agree. And Well, the good thing about these long drives, though, Bill, is might be able to wear down the defense a little bit, keep them on the field as long as possible. But Absolutely. get some points out of it at the same time. Olke under center. Oh, and it might be a little jump on Haven. Probably going to be enough for a first down right there. The easy way. Absolutely the, the easy way. Needed about four and a half yards. And that'll be five yards, so they'll move the chains. 2.02 left in the first quarter. Ellenwood would like to get back on top before the end of the quarter, if not the beginning of the second quarter with this drive here. About to the 40-yard line. Olke hands off to Brown. Breaks a tackle. Gets through one layer and out through another. Brought down at about the 49-yard line. Pickup of about 11 yards for Marcus Brown. The uh, Ellenwood offensive line really dominating the line of scrimmage right now on the offensive side of the ball. Making it look pretty easy. Yeah, they are making it look, making the running backs look like they're doing a heck of a job out there. But you have to give a lot of credit to the offensive line. You're right. It's like uh, we got a little kind of stoppage. I think maybe Fish Marcus has out. got some kind of equipment issue. We're going to bring Allen Templeton in the game. Yeah, and... Marcus Brown out. Templeton in, as you said. Marcus Brown doing a pretty nice job here today. Getting well, he's got four, five carries already. Over 20 yards thus far. At the Haven 49-yard line is where the Eagles are at during this set of downs. Handoff over to the right side. That's Churchill, it looks like. Carries the defenders. Pushes for a gain of about eight for Churchill. And Dusty Beams, or whoever's calling the, the plays here, really mixing it up with who's getting the touches here tonight, keeping Haven guessing. Yeah, it looks like uh, about everybody that Ellen has is carrying the football, and the nice thing is it's with a, quite a bit of success. Well, and the other thing you have to consider, I guess, is is the fact that everybody's pretty fresh each time they get their touches. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if Allen doesn't get the ball and, and uh, pretty quick again, like, and see if he can pop open another one up the middle. Well, they did give him the ball immediately and got him enough for a first down. A gave him of about four for Allen Templeton. Gain of four for Templeton, number 42. Now setting up at about first the 37-yard line of Haven. And Ellen Wood again, just like on the first drive, slowly marching down the field, taking yardage up chunk by chunk, averaging about five or six yards per carry, it seems like, and that's doing the job for the Eagles. 
Probably going to be the uh, last play of the uh, quarter right here. Yeah, just about 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Hand off to the left side. Marcus Brown trying to get around the corner. Pushing forward. Gain of about Marcus seven. On the carry. Six carries already tonight for Marcus Brown. And Eagles marching on here. Gain of about seven. Second and three. 12 Second seconds yard. left. And I would bet that Ellenwood's just going to take it to the second quarter and switch sides. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. Haven up 13 to eight, but Ellenwood driving at the moment. That's You're listening to Ellenwood Eagle football on ellenwoodeagles.org and grapebenpost.com. It's homecoming week for the Ellenwood Eagles. The Eagles will entertain the Cardinals from El Saline this coming Friday night. Join us for Ellenwood Eagle football on greatbenpost.com. Farmers Mutual Insurance is a proud supporter of Ellenwood Eagles academics and sports. Best of luck, Eagles, from your friends at Farmers Mutual Insurance. It's all something. For all of your insurance needs, whether it's home, auto, life, farm, or business, Jensen Associates. See Rob Fisher for a quote at Jensen Associates, Ellenwood. It's always something. St. Joseph Catholic School in Ellenwood provides the community with students who'll take their place in society as productive citizens instilled with Catholic values. St. Joseph School offers classes from kindergarten through the 8th grade. Please contact St. Joseph School if you'd like to see their facilities or for any questions. 13-8, Haven up at the beginning of the second quarter now. And uh, Ellenwood driving, though. They're just to the 30-yard line going right to left. Second down and about four for the Eagles. Well, now Cameron Williams and Ring Ring splitting out to the wide to the right. Could it be a throw here to begin the quarter? No, it's a immediate handoff to Templeton. He looked like he got stopped at the line of scrimmage, then kept his legs moving, pushed for another couple yards, making it close to a first down, but gonna be just short. Just short, about third and uh about third and long long one. Uh Ellen would change uh their formation right there at the end, and uh, Haven didn't quite adjust to that very well, at least on the passing side. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't come back with some kind of a screen pass out there later on in the game. Churchill in there for Templeton on the third and two. Churchill in the backfield, the single back formation now for Ellenwood. Now Marcus Brown moves over to the left, and off to Churchill up the middle, got a gap, and then pushes forward for a gain of about 10, 15 yards. Matt, if we got any uh, cross-country listeners tonight, we'd like to uh, say good luck to Mar run up there at Rimrock uh, by the great uh, city of Lawrence. Mar, if you have never seen that before, it is uh, quite entertaining. There's uh, all sorts of cross-country runners from around the state. I believe Steve Owen's going to be talking with cross-country uh, coach at halftime. Isn't that right, Bill? Yes, and uh, I believe our girls and boys team are both ranked second in the state. Got some runners in Ellenwood, that's for sure. Some runners on the football field as well, but Olke uh, way, uh, overthrowing uh, Cameron Williams. Just looked like a that's little miscommunication on that play or what route to Williams was supposed to run or something going Trevor on there. Yeah, I think uh, I think that would, Jared messed up on that the way he reacted that play. Uh, looked like if he got it to uh, Cameron's outside shoulder, that probably would have been a big gain, but uh, threw it to the inside and, and uh, Cameron was not able to adjust. Williams did have a lot of run, a uh, lot of room to run. Had he gotten the ball to his chest, instead it's second and ten. Single back formation again. Templeton in the backfield. Ten fifty one left in the half. Now a pitch back to Ring a Ring, but he's swallowed up in the backfield. Loss of about two or three. Brought down by number thirty two. Ryan also, Matt, uh, our tennis girls are playing or are going to have a turn tomorrow at uh, Wichita Lost Collegiate, the uh, Tournament of Champions. And champions, our girls have been this year. I believe our varsity team is undefeated. And our junior varsity girls have also done quite well. Um, they go to tournaments and they, they don't lose a match. They don't even lose wow. a game. You know, Bill, I, I did a lot of 
tennis watching when my sister was playing varsity tennis back in the day. And, man, I think I got more nervous than she did. That's tough to watch family member play some tennis. Absolutely. Templeton up the middle. Pushes forward for a gain of about four. And uh, that'll bring up fourth and about nine. Tackle by number 79, Levi Barlow. And, uh, you know, don't really have of about three. much of a kicking game. For the Eagles. Do no. you go for it here on fourth and nine? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm sure they're going to go for it. You're right, we don't have much of a kicking game, so we're going to go for it. I'm not sure. Uh, we're almost uh, too far out to uh, run the football, but we'll see what Coach Beam's got called. Olke's had a completion or two here tonight. He goes back. A good block from Churchill. Slings it to the end. Oh, almost picked off. Doesn't matter, though, as that's going to be a turnover on downs. Pretty good throw, but just pretty well defended on Haven's part over in the corner. Looked like it was an intended receiver. It was Ringer, or, or no, it was Marcus Brown, the intended receiver. Yeah, it was a, a nice job of running out there by, uh, by Jared. And threw a nice Jim ball down Anderson. there. Just a good play by the defensive back from uh, Haven. Well, after the long drive, Bill, uh, Haven will set up shop, but not the greatest field position, about the 14-yard line for the Wildcats. And it'll be Dylan Miller under center. And a handoff going up the middle to number 30. That's uh, Zach Hendrickson. Picks up a gain of about three or four on that one. Zach Hendrickson on the yeah, a lot, uh, lot better defense 14, by the Marcus Eagles right there. Two, uh, stopped the guy early on in the, the in the play. Much, much better job Second of attacking. Second and seven with under nine minutes to play in the half. At the 15 yard line. Haven deep in their own territory. Miller back to throw, just slings it off his back foot. Got an open man, but picked off. Devin Ramsey. Right there with the receiver the whole way, but it doesn't look like the greatest throw as Miller going off of his back foot, leaning back as he arched that one, and that leaves it up for grabs for the defense, and Ellenwood with a chance to get those points back on the board after they had that long drive that last series. Absolutely. Much better defense by the Eagles right there. Good play by Devin Ramsey. Good technique. He had that all the way. like to see that from the uh, youngster. Well, and... You're talking about the defense, and if the defense, what, one of the defenses can make a big stop or a big play, that could make a big difference. Here's Marcus Brown fighting off defenders just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like that's Marcus where he might have gotten. Maybe a loss of one. West. Yeah, Marcus broke about three tackles just loss to get back line of scrimmage the there. So, the be nice if we, the with this uh, field position, take advantage of it, go down and uh, get a score right here. Second and a ten. Maybe 10 and a half, 8.14 left in the half. And you're right, you definitely need, would like to get a score on this drive, especially halftime approaching. It's still got eight minutes left, but the way this game's been going, it comes quick. Brown with it after the pitch back. Maybe lost another yard on that play. Yeah, that was interesting because Marcus uh, stood there for a second like he was going to throw the football. I think that yeah. was going to be a quick pitch, and then he was going to pass the ball to uh, Cody Eastern, but the no defensive back the from Haven did not yeah, bite on that. He was well covered, so Marcus did the right thing of uh, just tucking it and see what he can get out of it. This makes it a little bit tougher. Don't want to get a three and out after a turnover. You want to execute after those turnovers, take advantage of them, and turn them into some points. Third and 11, and uh, Jared Olke, the sophomore, might be forced to throw the football on this play. Now they're going to hand it off up the middle. It's like Templeton on the carry and got a good push for about six yards. On the carry, down by now six it's four down territory the for the Eagles, and Game that's probably what they were the hoping line. to do, set up a more doable fourth down. Fourth and six for the Eagles, and one of the Haven players a little slow to get up, and now he's set to go. Yeah, it looks like Jared's coming with the play. I didn't know if uh, Coach Beam would try to punt them down in. You know, pin them deep, or if they go for it, looks like we're going to go for it. Fourth and six. Ring a ring over to the right along with Williams. Going to hand it off. And it's going to be close. Ooh, that's going to be close. I'm not sure. Haven's running kids on like they got the football. And I think it is just a tad bit short. 
Didn't see exactly who was on the – guess Churchill on the carry. Pickup of about five for Churchill, but one yard short. And Haven picking it up after the turnover on downs. And that would be good for another big play or another stop for the Eagles defense. 13 to 6, Haven with the lead. About uh, six and a half minutes to play. Scrambling over to the right side. That's uh, Rieger brought down finally by Ezern. Trey Regeer on the carry. Regeer picking right up a gain of about line. Oh, oh, nearly 20 yards, about 19 yards by Regeer. Regeer, he's a, uh, he's a speedster. He does a good job of hiding the football when he gets it. Did a little stutter stuff and was patient, waiting for his. Uh, Blockers pull around the corner. Okay. No, that kid does nothing slow, it seems like. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Why wait on a hole when you can just explode around the corner? Hand off up the middle. Looks like Ellenwood snuffed it out, though. Gain of about one by number 30, Hendrickson. Good play there by uh, Colton Churchill on the tackle and Garrett Hayes. Also, it looked like Ian Gary was in on the uh, tackle as well. Under six minutes to play now. Haven in Ellenwood territory at the Ellenwood 45-yard line. Second and eight. Miller under center. Almost handed it off to Cameron Williams of Ellenwood's held on to the football and no <laughs> gain was, on the play. Uh, that was a weird play, Matt, because I'm not sure what happened uh, outside of two Haven kids running each other. Um, must have been some kind of communication problem there. And lost about a yard for Will, for Miller. Five, just a little over five minutes to play now. Third and long. See if Haven is forced to throw it on third and long. Now they're going to run it outside. That's Eric Shive, backup quarterback, caught in the backfield. Going to be a loss. For Haven, make for a tough fourth down and probably bring out the punting squad on that one. Sure does. Matt, is this the first time we've seen a punt tonight? I think you're right. I think so. Loss of five. Haven going to punt it or at least showing that they're going to punt it. Ellenwood has seen a fake punt or two and have done a, a couple of fake punts as well. Here comes the boot. Meyer. Fitzmeyer with a knuckleballer punt. A Covered there by, it's like Templeton. Pick. Oh no! Did they Templeton lose the football? The Might have lost the football. It looks like it. And Ellenwood keeps it. Fumble on the play, recovered by Ellenwood. That Gearing slow to get up. Tackle yes, I think so. Slowly walk. Now well, he'll set back up. Just to uh, play on the offensive line and Ellenwood. Nice defensive stop for the Eagles and. You know, after the quick start, both teams have buckled down defensively. I guess it's been, it's been an entertaining game. It's been a little bit of a weird game that we've had so much offense and, and movement the first uh, quarter, and then both teams uh, have adjusted and, and uh, stiffened up their defense. Tail of two quarters so far with four and a half to go in this first half. Ball up the middle. Someone has it for Ellenwood and brought down for maybe a loss of one. And it uh, looks like Churchill on the carry. It's like Coach Dusty Beam's got him. He didn't. Something's not right there, so he's going to uh, give his team a break and and uh, give him some water. And might just be tired as much as this yeah. ball's been up and down the field tonight. You know, our kids going both ways. Probably a good time hour here just to to uh, give our kids a little bit of a breather. It's 4:19 left in this one. 13 to eight. Haven with the ball, and you know, besides that uh, break breakout run by. Ring a ring with the touchdown. Uh, Ellenwood unable to. I mean, they've moved the football. They just have it executed and got it in the end zone. They've always ran into that one set of downs where they've been stopped on four straight downs and couldn't get it past that first down marker. Yeah, I think we're in for some uh, big entertainment for the rest of the game. The way this has been going, if we can just. Uh, I think also if a team uh, the, the, maybe the lack of uh, success that Havens had if we get up on a, a score or two and make them play from behind that'll be uh, big it would be good to get up before the halfway point in this one 419 left in this one Ellen one back after the timeouts second and 11 for the Eagles Olke under center 
Gonna throw to the flats. That's ring ring. Plenty of room to run. Gets a nice block from Williams. Pushes out the floor, the uh, the field for a gain of about 18 yards. Yeah, that's that uh, adjustment that uh, I saw earlier there that that uh, Haven was not making. They didn't they didn't go out on Patrick, and which is probably not very wise. Uh, as you can see there, Patrick First in the down, open Allen field. That's a nice uh, threat for uh, for us and uh, makes a big play out of it. That pass out to the screen has been pretty successful thus far. As long as Allenwood pretty successful tonight outside of the hash marks. Really both teams pretty uh, successful outside the hash marks, whether it's running or passing out there. Oki handing off now up the middle. Looks like Churchill, I believe, on the carry. Pick up a nice gain of eight yards for Churchill. He and Templeton have been very reliable up the middle tonight. They have. They uh, those kids just they're almost like twins out there playing because they're built about exactly the same. Allen's has got a little bit more speed and, and uh, but both of them are powerful runners. Wish they'd get one of them out of the forties. It'd be easier to tell. Which exactly. Is which. See if we can talk to Coach Beam about that. <laughs> Second and two for the Eagles. And off up the middle again, but this time swallowed up. Haven knew what was coming on that play. Maybe even a loss of one, but see where they spot it. And uh, can't quite tell who was on. I think Templeton on the carry. Templeton on the carry. Yeah, I think you're right. No game. Another big third, uh, down, third down play for us. See if we can't get a first down here. Continue this drive. Third and two. Yeah, absolutely. That's been the the tough part for Ellen was third down conversions here tonight. Olke under center. They about one one for two on fourth down conversions, and someone started early. Flags flying, and this could either really help or hurt Ellenwood. And it's false start on the Eagles. That'll false make it a much tougher third down. Make it third down and seven. Yeah, it's moving over there on the right side and of our uh, line, and then uh, it does make it a much tougher call. But we're still, I think, all, we're probably in two-down territory. We got uh, about 2:49 left in the uh, in the half, so we'll see how it uh, ends up here. Clock running as well. Third and seven after the penalty. Hand off up the middle. That's Churchill. Plows over one of the defenders to at least Churchill fall forward when he's tackled and gets about to the same uh, by area where they were before the penalty. Pick up of about four Ford. yards. Fourth and four, and looks like fourth down territory, as you still said, uh, Bill Matty. Yeah, it looks like uh, Coach uh, Beam's going to, he's got Jared in the game, so going to go for it on fourth down. Big play for both teams right now. Here we go. We'll see who they go to and what they'll come with. Ring, ring on the right side. Looks like Templeton in the backfield along with Marcus Brown. Ring, ring up the middle, pushes forward enough for the first down, but a flag on the play as well. Might be on the defense, though. Might be on the defense. Maybe we had a face mask right there. Like a pickup of about yes, it is. five yards. Yes, sir. Face mask against the Wildcats. Face mask it is, and that will really help out Ellen Wood. And That's with the under two minutes mask. to play, that really helps the with how Ellen Wood's offense has gone. They take their time. Definitely going to need those extra 15 yards to try to get on the scoreboard before the end of the half. Absolutely. We'll try to keep you informed here. The time, it's uh, about 1.50. We do not have the ability to put the time on the uh, computer yet, but that is in the works. And penalty flags. And a false start. False start against 15 steps forward, five steps back for Ellenwood, thanks to penalties. 142 remaining. It'll be first and 15 set up at about the 40-yard line for Ellenwood. Now quickly, while they're setting things up, want to mind you uh, about the keys to the game brought to you by Dove, Chevrolet, Pontiac, and Buick. As uh, one of the keys to the game is get some defensive stops and both teams have proven it here in the second half. And a great grab by Cameron Williams. Flags on the play as well. Possibly on the defense. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac sponsoring our keys to the game tonight and sponsoring our ride to the game. A 
providing a 2010 Chrysler Town and Country minivan. Seven passenger minivan and face mask going to be called on Haven, by the way. That'll put Ellenwood even closer with a 124 remaining. First down and 10 for Ellenwood at the Haven. One twenty-four, and Ellenwood trying to go up before the end of the half. They're down by five. Get, getting in the end zone would get them the lead. Matt, if I remember right, uh, we've got two timeouts if we need them. I believe you're right. They did take one timeout after a long second down. There's Marcus Brown around the outside. Pushes forward for a gain. Gain of, the carry brought down by gain of about... Four yards for Brown. It's a ninth carry for Marcus Brown. Really a pretty, pretty balanced attack and a timeout taken by Haven. 104 remaining. We'll take timeout it with them. 13 to 8 lead for Haven. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagle Football on EllenwoodEagles.org and GrapeInPost.com. When you think of your future, think Barton. When you think of career training, think Barton. When you think about completing your GED or getting specialized training for your business and employees, think of Barton. Find out what drives you at Barton Community College. Woodhaven Care Center is a small, quiet, skilled nursing care facility with independent living apartments available. Located in the rural community of Ellenwood, we're confident that the hardworking staff will provide a safe and caring environment for you or your loved one. Stop by Woodhaven for a complimentary tour today. St. Joseph Catholic School in Ellenwood provides the community with students who will take their place in society as productive citizens instilled with Catholic values. St. Joseph School offers classes from kindergarten through the 8th grade. Please contact St. Joseph School if you'd like to see their facilities or for any questions. Second and eight with 104 remaining in this one. Ellenwood driving. Almost, now well, they are in the red zone at the moment. Olke under center, handoff to Templeton, pounds it up the middle and... Uh, Pushes forward inside the 10. Clock's under a minute now. They're going to have to go to a hurry-up offense. It looks like Templeton with a gain of about two yards. Templeton out. Looks like Churchill back in there. 45 seconds in county. Olke under center. Third and five. Have to hurry up here. They do have one more timeout, I believe. Now under 40 seconds. and Olke for the throw. Oh, what a grab by Cameron Williams. Touchdown, Ellenwood Eagles. One-handed grab brought it down, and that's what it takes sometimes just to get it in the end zone, and that gives Ellenwood the lead, 14-13. to 13. What a grab by Cameron Williams. That sure was by far the best catch we've seen all year by anybody. Great catch in the end zone at a perfect time. Nine-yard touchdown grab by Cameron Williams, and a pretty good, a decent throw by Olke. Got it in the back of the end zone to where only Cameron Williams could catch it. And he did. Brought it in. 14-13 lead with 31 seconds left in the half. Here they go for two. They'll look to block inside. Three in the backfield. Hand off Templeton. I think he's in there. And he is. Two-point conversion converted. Ellenwood on top. 16 to 13 with 31 seconds left in the half. What a grab by Cameron Williams for the touchdown score. Let's take a break. You're tuned in to EllenwoodEagles.org and GrapeAndPost.com. Calling all businesses, large or small. National Billing is your accounts receivable processing, billing, financing, and management headquarters. See Mel Wade and the staff at National Billing, 13 North Main in Ellenwood, a proud sponsor of Ellenwood Eagle activities. St. Joseph Catholic School in Ellenwood provides the community with students who will take their place in society as productive citizens instilled with Catholic values. St. Joseph School offers classes from kindergarten through the 8th grade. Please contact St. Joseph School if you'd like to see their facilities or for any questions. For Ellenwood, special teams back out there. 31 seconds left in the ball game. And, Bill, we were talking about how important it was for Ellenwood to get up uh, before halftime. And Cameron Williams really helping them out there with that touchdown grab in the back of the end zone. That was a great catch. Uh, just a, a spectacular play by Cameron Williams. Yep. And it's something that we know that he can do. And, and uh, just nice to see him make a big play like that. A little squib kick with only 30 seconds left in the half. And 
Round the outside, that's number 14, uh, Timothy Hendrickson. Brought down, a, a, oh, might have been brought Ooh. down by the face mask. Dark. And the ball stripped away. Flags on the field, though. We'll see what happens. Ellen Wood does have the football. We'll see if it stays that way. Matt, I think um, they were throwing their beanies when um, when they saw oh. the fumble, but but uh, Tanner Swanks stripped the ball, then recovered it. It's, it's wow. ours with 24 seconds left. Well, 24, let's see if we can test Jared Olke's arm right. here. We're down at about the 38-yard line. 16 to 13 lead for Ellenwood. 24 seconds left, and Ellenwood trying to maybe tack on a few more here. Olke under center. Pitches back. Brown to throw. Oh, tipped away. Good look, though, to Ezer and a good throw by Marcus Brown. Very good throw to Marcus. He just threw a dart without even having to step into it. He, he threw that flat footed about 30 yards on the line. Only a four second, four seconds taken off the clock there. 20.1 seconds left. Might as well go to the area one more time. And if need be, you can run some clock on third or fourth. Well, third down, maybe possibly fourth down. See what happens in the air. Here's Olke. Now pitch to ring a ring around the outside as usual, but brought down in the backfield. This time Hendrickson on the tackle. Cody ring a ring on the carry, brought down. And Probably going to be the uh, the end of it. Ten seconds. They stop the clock right there, and let's see if they get it running again here. Now they're going to be a timeout, I believe, on Ellenwood. They're going to give it one last shot with ten seconds left. That might take up have if. If Folky has enough protection and if he's sacked, they can just take it back to the end of the half. Might as well. Right. We might see another uh, double pass by Marcus trying to throw the ball down there. He's got a strong enough arm to get the ball to the end zone. Might see him like that. Uh, probably got enough time to run two plays if we would happen to get a, a big play for first down. Otherwise, I think we'll just fourth down probably uh, go to halftime. Well, do you see a, a quick throw then? And this uh, third down and, and long from about – or third and 14 from about the 44? I would say they'd probably throw, uh, probably throw it down there, maybe give Cameron Williams a shot, or, or uh, we haven't seen Cody Ezern's name tonight on offense, so maybe give him a shot and see what happens. Again, Ellenwood does have one timeout left. Jarrett's had pretty good protections on the football, so it's probably not that big of a risk to, to take a chance down the field. You're, you're right. He's probably had the best protection he's had all year yes. against Haven. Nice work by the offensive line thus far tonight. From the 44-yard line with 10 seconds left. Ellenwood with the football and the three-point lead. Olke back. Pressure, though. Going to the left side. Deep. The ease on. He's got it. Brought down inside the 10. Are they going to call a timeout? They stop the clock with 1.9 seconds left. They got a shot to put it in the end zone here. A great, great pass. Great catch by Cody Eason. Cody Eason gets get some separation from his man. Is there a flag on the play? Uh, looks, looks like it. Looks like so. Marcus Breen is oh, bringing back his offense right now. So. That's a shame. It must have been a holding call. In Ellenwood's there. canceled out some big plays tonight. A big 67-yard run was brought. Touchdown run by Templeton was brought back. And then this big reception to Ezern brought back. But, man, this the passing game is showing some strides here tonight. Absolutely. It's got to be fun for those kids. Uh, for Cody Ezern and Cameron Williams knowing that they, that they uh, could get the, their number called tonight. And... Uh, Jared's had a, done a nice job of throwing the football, so we'll see if uh, that continues. Just a very well balanced Ellenwood offense tonight. I think you know everybody on our team that's a skill guy has been involved at some point or another. Well, it's just well they'll run the clock down as there was no timeout taken, and that'll be the half. But successful one offensively for Ellenwood with the couple long drives they've had. 16 to 13, the score here at halftime. Bill, what, what do you think that Ellenwood needs to do coming into the second half to keep this thing going? Well, I think uh, you know, defensively, just just stiffen up. Don't give up that big play. If we take out the big plays, uh, who knows? We could you know, could be 16-0 right now. So just eliminate the big plays. Talk to them about that. Uh, continue to, to congrat, you know, positive things toward your offense. have been moving the football, haven't turned the ball over. So uh, I just, just keep it positive right now. Call that to... Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac, keys to the game right there. And one more half to play. And we want to thank our sponsors here for Ellenwood Eagle Football on EllenwoodEagles.org and GreatBendPost.com. Sponsored by Lang Diesel. 
Ezern Plumbing, Heating and Air, USD 355 in Ellenwood, Farmers Mutual, Jensen Insurance, Highlay Engine Pump and Supply, Pit Stop Service Station, Barton Community College, St. Joseph School, Cheyenne Trailer Sales, Woodhaven Care Center, and Ellenwood Hospital and Clinic. Again, Ellenwood on top here at halftime in Haven, 16 to 13 over Haven at half. You're tuned in to uh, Ellenwood Eagle Football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. show. My name is Tiara Spinoza. And I'm Sam R. Martin. And we are here with... I'm Doug Barrett, uh, class of 77, Ellenwood High School. Doug, how long have you been involved with the Gathering of the Eagles? Um, for the last four Gathering of the Eagles, um, I've been involved with it. Um, it started back in uh, 1982 uh, with the first one. Um, it was started up by uh, several of the... Um, uh, the founding fathers, basically some of the fathers of Ellenwood, Joe Hickel, Louis Hartenbauer, some of the uh, some of the guys that have been around uh, basically forever. How long how long has the the gathering of eagles been in place, Doug? Well, I'd say since '82. Um, uh, you know, it it's been uh, every three years, um, and uh, we just kind of take the ball and and run with it, and hopefully make it through. Right. Well, in your own words, what exactly is the gathering? Well, the Gathering of the Eagles is an all-school reunion. Uh, basically, we get uh, get people from all across the country, um, and it's easier to get people farther away than it is to get the local people to show up. Um, but it is a reunion where we can get together and and uh, see each other and and uh, go to uh, the homecoming, see the improvements that have been done at uh, at the high school, and uh, just kind of go with that. Well, how do you? Even well, contacting is done, uh, you know, anymore in the days of uh, the electronics. Uh, we can use a lot of uh, email, uh, Facebook. Uh, back in the old days, it was all done by postcards and letters. Wow. What activities go on while you're at the Gathering of the Eagles? Well, the Gathering of the Eagles is set for two days. We'll have uh, school tours that go through here. Um, on Friday night, we'll have uh, homecoming events where people will go to uh, the game. Uh, we'll have a, um, a football toss that's going to be done with three random people um, out of the audience. Uh, after that, there will be uh, quite a few people that are meeting at the uh, Legion for uh, dance and uh, karaoke, if you can imagine seeing all of us old people out. To, uh, there I am talking about old people here. That, that's me now. At 50 and older, I guess that, that's old. So uh, we'll be doing that. And then on Saturday, um, we'll have a banquet at um, the uh, Highland Lodge over at uh, Great Bend at the Convention Center. And um, we'll have uh, dinner. We'll have some entertainment from uh, some of the local high school stuff. Actually, uh, the cheerleaders will be performing. Um, we've got the Mystic Blues performing. And uh, there will also be uh, a select uh, group of band students that will also be playing. And then we'll have Oh, um, a dance afterwards, and uh, for some of the younger people and some of the older ones, we'll have a casino night. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how do you get the younger alumni to be involved? In well, this? that was one of the things with uh, the casino night that um, uh, we started because we were having a lot of trouble getting the groups from uh, basically from 1970s on. It's real tough to get them in there. Um, so we started implementing that, and it brings them in for a little more than, than just dancing, and they can uh, 
kind of hang with their old friends and go through that. Is there anything that you're personally expecting out of this guy there? Uh, personally expecting? Uh, th no, not really. I've got some, uh, um, oh, some of the classes around us. Like uh, I graduated in 77, and the class of 76 is actually having their reunion during the gathering. So I'll get to see a lot of old friends that way. Is there anybody that you personally want to see, though? Um, uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for asking. <laughs> Do you have an expected turnout amount or how many people you expect to see? Well, um, we kind of had hoped for uh, somewhere in that 350 to 400 range. And we've had a lot of uh, people sending their uh, uh, their papers, their uh, enrollments back for this thing. Um, I think right now we are at... Uh, 260 I believe and they've been coming in about uh, 15 to 20 a day uh, you know everybody waits till the last minute to send them in so. yeah. um, what differences this year of the gathering of the Eagle compared to the ones in the past um, probably involving uh, more of the high school groups we've done some things where we've had um, just uh, actual uh, mystic blues reunions uh, where we've had, uh, you know, 60, 70 of the Mystic Blues uh, from the past have been there. And this year we're going to incorporate a couple others, um, like I say, with the cheerleaders and also with the band. So um, the alumni can come in and see what's actually going on in, uh, uh, in the high school. Okay, thinking on how special groups are reunion, um, we're getting back together. Is there anybody that's, like, receiving a special reward? Um, um, kind of what we'll do tonight, we'll have um, – the oldest alumni that's that's there uh, will have uh, the one that's traveled the farthest, and I think as far as special recognition, that will probably be it. So, so how many times have you attended the gathering of the um, I have been going since um, the mid '90s, actually. Um, uh, the first few I lived out of state and uh, didn't come back to that, uh, but then uh, about the mid '90s, I started showing up to it. Do you have any key players that worked in organizing it? Yeah, um, one of the biggest is uh, uh, she's an employee here at the school, uh, Susie Batchman. Um, if it wasn't for Susie, none of this would, would go on because she works tirelessly on it, and she organizes the entire event, and then she just keeps us to uh, kind of run some of the uh, subgroups. Um, John Ezern, uh, myself, uh, the mayor, Frank Kelch, uh, Casey Schartz, uh, Critcher, um, let's see, uh, Casey Roberts, um, uh, Danielle, and, and I, I can't think of what Danielle's last name is, and uh, uh, I, I think that that's pretty well it. So. All right. So are there some specific things you'd like to see in future gatherings? Well, I, we're going to try to get uh, to work where we can start getting um, more of the younger group there. Um, we've even talked about uh, going in with uh, past teachers, uh, somebody like Jack Bowman, uh, Francis Flack, somebody from back in the 60s and 70s and 80s where um, we'll have special nights for them and then um, bring more of the students in that want to come back and see them and try to build around that. All right. Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Doug. Thanks for enlightening us on the Gathering of the Eagles, which is next week, and we'll get you back to some second half action. Back on GreatBenPost.com, the Ellenwood Eagles on the road here tonight of facing the Wildcats here in Haven as the Eagles look to go 2-2 two and two on the season. We're now joined by the head coach of the Ellenwood Boys and Girls Cross Country Team, Coach Lyles Lishley. Let's talk about cross country so far for Ellenwood. How's it been going so far for the boys and girls? It's going well. I mean, each week we're getting better and competing well, and uh, just looking forward to each week and uh, getting to the next meet. Talking about the meets, um, your first one of the season got postponed due to the heat. I can't believe we're talking about heat just a month ago, but um, you got started a little late with the meet. You've only had a couple of meets, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We went to uh, Heston and we've been to Stafford so talk, far. Talk about the Heston cross-country meet for your boys' team, um, how they perform, and maybe some individual efforts. Our, our guys were second uh, overall, and uh, we lost to the defending state champs in 3A by a point, uh, Wichita Independent. Um it was a good little deal. It's Heston's unique meet, unique meet where they uh, you, each each kid races in their own class, and they take your best five performances on the guys' side and best three performances on the girls' side from each class. And uh, 
we had two first. Uh, Pedro Montoya was first in the sophomore race, and uh, Morgan Feemster was first in the freshman race. Uh, we had a fourth by Kyle Oglesby in the sophomore race, and then I think we had a ninth, uh, excuse me, a seventh by uh, Kyle Blakesley, and then we had a, let's say, a ninth by, excuse me, an eighth by uh, Kale uh, Clawson, and then a, a twelfth by uh, Derek Ward. Then on the girls' side, we were third overall. Uh, we lost to Douglas, who was probably the, the top team in 3A. And we lost to Sacred Heart, who was one of the top teams in 2A. Uh, we lost Sacred Heart by three. So uh, that's you know, a team we want to definitely try to get back after. Then you went in, um, to the Stafford meet, and uh, boys and girls both performed pretty well there. Yeah, our guys our guys won. I think that's the first meet they won in probably you know, a whole long, long, long time. And uh the girls actually tied for first, but we lost the tiebreaker, which is that comes down to your sixth girl. Uh, but they both performed well, and like I said, each week we're just trying to get better uh, each week, and they did. And you talk about getting better, and the, uh, overall, Illinois boys and girls are getting better every single year because it's reflected everybody across the state starting to see it. In Illinois, you got a girls and a boys team right now ranked number two in the state of Kansas. What does that mean to you as a coach and to the individuals? Well, it's just the hard work they put in. I mean, just for the last three years, I mean, the girls started the tradition three years ago, and the, the guys, have, you know, have kind of caught on now, and they work real hard this summer and, uh, to get that tradition going themselves. And uh, the ranking, like I always say, rankings are always nice, but, uh, you know, it's nice to be ranked second, but it only really matters that last week in October who's ranked what and who's ready to go to war that day. And that's the day around the Halloween. It's October 29th. That's state. But before you get to state, you got a big meet tomorrow in Rimrock. Is that Rimrock? Is that Lawrence? And tell us a little bit about Rimrock. That's kind of a big meet for everybody across the street. Yeah, I know in our division we'll have 44 teams. Uh, we're in the blue division, which is for your smaller schools. And then some bigger schools are in there, too. Uh, you know, I think uh, I think it's like eight or nine states are represented across the, the country at this meet. Uh, that we'll be racing against Kearney, uh, Missouri, which is a, a, a prominent uh, distance goal out of Missouri. Then uh, Wichita Independent, who you know beat us a uh, week, couple weeks ago at Heston by point, will be there. Uh, and then our old nemesis, Ness City, will be there both on the boys' and girls' side. And then Sacred Heart, of course, will be there, too, for the girls. So it's uh you know it's kind of a big day for us. Uh, it's nice though that you go out there and you race against 44 teams, and that uh, if you can go do that, then when you get to state, when you're only against 12 teams, it just doesn't seem like it's that big of a meet. Uh, it just takes a little pressure off you later on. I mean, if you can perform there, uh, you can pretty much perform anywhere. After Rimrock, what do you have left? Uh, we'll, we'll take a week off this year. Uh, we're gonna, uh, and we'll just train. We're going to focus on, on training this year. I've, a lot of mistakes. A lot of times, people uh, race too much during the season instead of being able to work out and do your workouts. And uh, so we'll take a week off to train, and then we'll come back and we'll go to Stafford. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Sterling. And then we'll go. And then it's our, what I call the money meets. We got our league championship, then the region championship, and then the state championship. So you know, after, after this week, we're pretty much down to, to four meets. Well, four meets. Uh, season's going to be over before you know it. Then it's. Going to be money time here in about, uh, well, the middle to end of October. Coach, we appreciate you joining us here on the halftime uh, show for Ellenwood Eagle football as they're on the road here tonight uh, against the Wildcats here in Haven. Again, thanks for joining us, Coach. Uh, good luck tomorrow at Rimrock, and we'll find out how you did and um, get you on next week, probably Friday, too, okay? All right. Thanks, Steve. Hey, that's the head coach of the uh, Boys and Girls Crotch cross-country teams here in Ellenwood. Uh, they're off to Rimrock tomorrow. They're ranked number two in the state right now on the boys and girls side. Good luck to Coach Lashley and the, the boys and girls. Coming up next, second half, Ellenwood Haven. After this, GreatBenPost.com. Pit Stop Service Station at 201 East Santa Fe in Ellenwood is your one stop for oil changes, tire repairs, exhaust systems, brakes, transmission work, tune-ups, new tires, and more. Open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to noon on Saturdays. Pit Stop Service Station, Ellenwood. Visit Dick's Engine for all your oil-filled engine needs. Give Andy a call at 564-2238. Call me all businesses, large or small. National Billing is your accounts receivable. Processing, billing, financing, and management headquarters. See Mel Wade and the staff at National Billing, 13 North Main in Ellenwood, a proud sponsor of Ellenwood Eagle Activities. 
Pit Stop Service Station at 201 East Santa Fe in Ellenwood is your one stop for oil changes, tire repairs, exhaust systems, brakes, transmission work, tune ups, new tires, and more. Open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to noon on Saturday. Pit Stop Service Station, Ellenwood. Woodhaven Care Center is a small, quiet, skilled nursing care facility with independent living apartments available. Located in the rural community of Ellenwood, we're confident that the hardworking staff will provide a safe and caring environment for you or your loved one. Stop by Woodhaven for a complimentary tour today. Dr. Christopher Brown, along with Dr. Charlie Joslin, is now accepting new patients at the Ellenwood Hospital Clinic. The Ellenwood Hospital Clinic is fully staffed Monday through Friday to promote your good health. Call me all businesses, large or small. National Billing is your accounts receivable processing, billing, financing, and management headquarters. See Mel Wade and the staff at National Billing, 13 North Main in Ellenwood, a proud sponsor of Ellenwood Eagle Activities. Just like the student athletes at Ellenwood High School, Lang Diesel is doing what it takes to get the job done. See all the staff for new products, parts, or service at Lang Diesel, just west of Ellenwood, and good luck, Eagles, from your friends at Lang Diesel. Cheyenne Trailer Sales has all sizes and models of trailers from Diamond T heavy haulers, car haulers, hydraulic dump trailers and cargo trailers, stock trailers, utility trailers. Central Kansas Trailer Supermarket is Cheyenne Trailer Sales, located in Great Bend and Ellenwood. When you need a state-certified master electrician, call Triple T Electric. Triple T Electric can handle your electrical needs, whether it's residential, commercial, farm, irrigation, or oil field. Triple T Electric in Ellenwood is a proud supporter of Ellenwood Sports. Extreme savings at Next Tech Wireless. Now receive $50 off any phone, including the new HTC Merge, the Motorola Milestone Plus, and the HTC 7 Pro. You'll also receive $60 off an additional line. That's six months free. Next Tech Wireless has added more towers, offering even better coverage in Kansas and across the entire United States. Visit your local Next Tech Wireless store for extreme savings throughout the month of September. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, you're covered nationwide. St. Joseph Catholic School in Ellenwood provides the community with students who'll take their place in society as productive citizens instilled with Catholic values. St. Joseph School offers classes from kindergarten through the 8th grade. Please contact St. Joseph School if you'd like to see their facilities or for any questions. For generations, Ellenwood residents have counted on the Ellenwood Leader for news and information about the community. The Leader and the Central Kansas Rocket cover the topics that are important to residents of Eastern Barton County. Start your subscription today or pick up the latest copy at the Ellenwood Leader office. The Rocket is free. Well, about to begin the second half and uh, Ellenwood on top on the road in Haven. 16 to 13 right now and captain's meeting at the center of the field and going into the second half of play we've seen a lot of no defense in the first quarter uh, then some defense stepping up in the second quarter uh, guessing defense is going to be a key to the second half here bill yeah uh it'll be interesting to see which team's uh defense shows up the second half and uh we'll have another fast pace start like we did the first first quarter well uh it, i think it'll be entertaining well we sure had an entertaining end to the first half anyways Cameron Williams with a leaping outstretched arm catch for the touchdown to put Ellenwood up with about 31 seconds left in the first half that puts the score at 16 to 13 and and really that's all started because of the uh, recovered fumble I believe after the hey, was it a punt or a kickoff I think it was kickoff I think if I, uh, I think uh, Hannah Swank stripped the ball in the kickoff goal. return and that's what gets us to this point. 12 minutes on the board. Looks like we are set for kickoff for the second half here tonight. 16 to 13 Ellenwood lead and taking on a, a winless Haven team. And Ellenwood, both teams really very hungry for a victory tonight. And Ellenwood with the win here can get back up to 500 to 2-2 two two before they take on southeast of Celine, who, by the way, is up on Ellsworth, I believe, 27 to 6 at halftime. Or 25 to 7 at halftime, southeast of Saline on top of Ellsworth. Before we get things underway, I want to thank our sponsors USD 355 in Ellenwood, Farmers Mutual Jensen Insurance, National Billing, 
RMAC, Allenwood Booster Club, and Triple T Electric. Set for kickoff here in the second half. Haven will get it. Ball trying to be scooped up there by Regeer. Oh, he's breaking free up the middle. Regeer again. A dangerous X factor for this Haven squad. Of wild, an 80 yard Ray touchdown Regeer, return by Regeer. Wow. Yeah, we talked about it being a wild second half, and it's, uh, it's about as well as we can get so far. That's he started off the game with an 80 yard touchdown run. First play that uh, Halstead had. Then he had a 19 run in there as well. He's and now an 80 yard kickoff return. Puts Haven up 19 to 16 and see if they can get the field goal in to put them up by four. Kicking here, number 14, uh, Timothy Hendrickson, the freshman. Oh, and snuffed away, couldn't get a good snap, and then the wall just broke loose for the offensive line on the field goal. Makes it a 19 to 16 lead for Haven. Only uh, 14 seconds ran off the clock after the kickoff, and now Ellenwood going to get the ball back with their first chance here in the second half offensively. And we were wondering what kind of second half this was going to be, and that might be an answer. This could be a very explosive beginning to the first or the beginning to the second half. Yeah, Ellenwood needs to uh, bounce back right here, keep their keep their heads up, get a good return, let the offense do what they've been doing, and and uh, go down and uh, get back ahead. That was a smart play on the extra point that the kid was a defensive slayer and uh, Marcus Brown just made a pretty easy tackle. Could have had an unsportsmanlike had he gone in and, and just leveled him, but uh, smart play, kept his head up. Yeah, penalties have kind of been a factor here tonight too, Bill. So whoever keeps down on the penalties will probably have a good chance of coming at the victor. A high booming kick. Picked up by Templeton, it looks like. He slips and falls at about the 23-yard line. That looks to be where Ellenwood will start things off. And No need to get in a big hurry here if you're the Eagles. Just play your type of offense. They've chipped away about four or five yards every time and really did a nice job against this Haven defense. 19-16, 11-42 left in the third quarter here in this one. We'll see what Jared Olke can do in this second half as well. Had quite a few more throws. He had about three or four completions, four completions, including that touchdown throw to Cameron Williams to end the first half. Uh, Looked like we had a legal substitution on um, Haven on that play. Referee's talking it over. They're going to move the football. Or they might. Well, they can re-kick it. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Now, is that an option on Ellenwood's part to re-kick it? Um, actually, to tell you the truth, I, I think you have to take that penalty. Hmm. Now they'll start off at about the 35-yard line. Could have a better return as they ended up uh, Templeton running it to about the 23-yard line before he slipped up. So Haven kicking off at the 35 as opposed to the 40-yard line once again. 11.42 left in the third quarter after the big run back from Regeer of Haven. And that might be a little better kick even. About to the 25-yard line, pushing up the field. I believe that's Ezern. No, not Ezern. Might have been a ring-a-ring -a -ring on the return. Gets it to about the 33-yard line. So... In the end, it turned out to be better taking the penalty. Well, yeah, about a ten-yard, uh, ten-yard play there. So, yeah, but uh, helped the Eagles out for sure. Down, Eagles at their own -yard line. Now we'll see what they do offensively. Try to answer back after the kickoff return from Regeer of Haven. Eleven thirty-four left in the third quarter. Olke under center, the sophomore taking the snap. That's a handoff. Looks like. Might be uh, Templeton on the carry. Um, might, might be Marcus, Marcus Brown, actually. Too many fours on the jerseys. Absolutely. <laughs> Marcus Brown on the carry, brought down by number six, Jed. B. Three yeah, that positive in. For pl uh, first down play, though, by the Eagles. Uh, gain, of a, gain of a couple yards there. The Makes five. second down play calling much easier to do. Brown tied with a number of carries in the first half with 
Alan Templeton had nine carries in the first half for 33 yards, now 36 yards. Hand off up the middle, but snuffed out by, by Haven. Might be a loss of a yard or two after, after the carry. Stop for the Wildcats Templeton on the Levy carry, I believe. Levi Barlman. Third and about seven. Loss of about a yard will be third down and eight. Ellenwood at their own 38-yard line. Setting up with that split bag. Now Williams and Ring a Ring splits off to the left side. And hand off up the middle. That's Churchill, but he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And brings up fourth down. Probably going to have to punt here. Churchill Looks like Haven's uh, defense is a little bit more fired up. Number Kids six, are hitting harder. Uh, first half, Ellen was able to break some tackles uh, initially, but it uh, looks like the Haven kids have come out the Allen's third quarter and hit a little bit harder than they did the, in the first half. Well, after after you get a kickoff returned on you, last thing you want to do to 30, retaliate Jackson. is a three and out, and that's exactly what Ellen Wood does here. High boot from Templeton. Rolls out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. That's where Haven will set up shop. Interesting to see that Templeton going with the booting uh, duties here tonight as Ringering usually taking that, but maybe Coach Beams wanting to keep him out because that's one more play where Ringering could get hurt again. Absolutely. That's probably the deal there. Patrick might be a little bit sore from last week's injury and hey, use Allen in that situation. And Allen did a pretty nice job. Templeton did a nice job last week against Hoisington and had plenty of opportunities to boot the ball as well. Running around the outside, that's Regeer. Once again, the explosive X Factor for Haven. Gain of about 12. Well, he's a very explosive kid, definitely. Uh, somebody our defense has got to uh, really key off of. Mark, or, yeah, Marcus Brown almost had the uh, tackle early in the play and just couldn't quite get him down. And really, Matty, I don't understand why Haven doesn't just go to Regeer every play. Yeah, as, as fast as he is. Um, and they, they put him in that slot back spot over there where he can really just get the ball going this, this direction over here. Yeah, he's kind of leaning towards the right as if he's going to just swing around the outside. Doesn't get the feed this time, though. It's Hendrickson breaks the tackle, breaks another. Off to the races, to the 10, and brought down by Ezern inside the 10-yard line. Ezern stopping him from uh, scoring there, but, man, how many tackles, how many missed tackles can you have? Yeah, defensive getting tackled a little bit. I can see Coach Beam uh, telling his kids to, to get lower. Uh, trying, they're just tackling a little too high right now. Might be a little bit of fatigue. I'm not sure. Got a 21-yard pickup for Hendrickson on his fourth carry of the night, and now in the red zone is Haven trying to tack onto their lead, 19 to 16. They'll feed inside, but snuffed out by the Ellenwood defense and brought down Hendrickson with the carry. Down Good tackle by, by Marcus Brown and uh, Brown. Yeah, Colton Churchill. Good aggressive play on our defense. And that's what you need to get, get them, the defense a little bit fired up, especially after a couple big runs from Haven. Stop the momentum here. Absolutely. We'll see if that big play there by Cody Ezer in the play before to save a touchdown. I thought for sure the uh, kid was going to score, but uh, we'll see if uh, Ellenwood can, can stop him here. Inside the 20 at about the 12-yard line, inside feed. Snuffed out again now, trying to work it to the outside. Look like it is a number 12. That would be uh, Austin Fritzemeyer. Austin Fritzemeyer on the carry. Brought down number 40. Haven does a nice job of uh, covering Austin up the football. You don't know exactly who has the uh, football. But what I've noticed is that our, the, uh, on Ellenwood's side, they're, they're doing their assignment responsibilities because you see uh, two or three guys being tackled in one place. So that means they, they're responsible for a person and they are falling through with their duties. Back to pass this time. Miller goes to the right side, open with the catch. But brought down by Ezern. Nice job on the one-on-one. -on -one. Good tackle by Ezern. Like it was uh, number one, uh, Dylan Arbuckle with the reception. Does not get him in the end zone and brings up a fourth down. Is that Might be a field goal here with uh, how much 
trust they have in their freshman kicker. And they're going to take a timeout to think about it anyways. Timeout, Haven. 19 to 16, a fourth and about four for Haven. Haven with the lead with 7.52 left in the third quarter. We'll take a quick break. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagle Football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. Eastern Plumbing, Electric, Heating, and Air is your authorized carrier dealer. Residential or commercial, Eastern can service and repair all makes and models. Call 620-564-3377. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Eastern in Ellenwood. Just like the student athletes at Ellenwood High School, Lang Diesel is doing what it takes to get the job done. See all the staff for new products, parts, or service at Lang Diesel, just west of Ellenwood. And good luck, Eagles, from your friends at Lang Diesel. It's homecoming week for the Ellenwood Eagles. The Eagles will entertain the Cardinals from El Saline this coming Friday night. Join us for Ellenwood Eagle football on GreatBenPost.com. Pit Stop Service Station at 201 East Santa Fe in Ellenwood is your one stop for oil changes, tire repairs, exhaust systems, brakes, transmission work, tune ups, new tires, and. Big play here. Miller around the left side. He's got a corner. He's going to throw it. Tipped by Ellenwood. What a play. I don't know about that decision by Miller. He had a wide open lane just to maybe even march in the end looked, zone there, Matty. But uh, looked like he could have ran it in, but uh, stopped for it. Broken up by Devin Ramsey. Another big play defensively by the, uh, mm -hmm. the young sophomore. Second time we've called his name on a big defensive play, and that is a huge one, making it still a one-possession game. And Ellenwood, yet they have bad field position here, but really stopped the big drive from Haven, which could have really swung the momentum in Haven's favor, and that might be a momentum stopper right there for Ellenwood. See what they do offensively. 7.45 left in the third quarter. Olke setting up under center at about the four-yard line. And off up the middle, breaking some tackles. Marcus Brown, that's what you want to see out of a guy when you're backed up in your own end zone. Break some tackles and create your own. Brown gain of about six yards. Nice to see uh, Marcus give us a little bit of breathing room right there. Good job by the offensive line of uh, moving them back. Haven might be down just a little bit with uh, not scoring on that fourth down play. Second and three. Over seven to play. And really, the running game's been working out well for Ellenwood. Credit to the balance of the running attack and also the offensive line. Up the middle again, Brown pushing forward. Finding a nice hole, and was that a flag? Penalty marker on the field. Might have enough for the first down. We'll see what the penalty is, though. Brought down by 72, Caden Ford. Legal I, hit to the head, I maybe? Might, that might be. Could be a 15-yarder right here. Yeah, hey, Haven backing up quite a bit, and I think that is the case. That's a huge penalty right there. Well, another gift from Haven. They've been uh, putting up more yardage, I believe, an illegal hit to the head. But Personal foul against the Wildcats, 15-yard penalty. 7.04 remaining. Ellenwood will have first down and 10. Now Ellenwood at their own 33. Keep that running game going. Marcus Brown's been picking up steam along with the other runners for the Eagles. There's Brown in the backfield now. He gets the handoff again, but this time snuffed out. Haven... Going after Brown on that one. Looked like a lot of Haven uh, players keyed off on that play. Looks like they're being pretty aggressive defensively. Maybe we can uh, get Patrick Henry involved on the outside. Now you know, if there was a little more of a throwing game, a play action would come in handy at a time like this. But, of course, you don't want to risk a turnover or anything like that at this point or a momentum change. They've been running the ball so well. Why stop doing it now? Absolutely. Second and 12. More moving over to the right side. ring a ring and Williams setting up in the slot. And off up the middle. That's Churchill, I believe. Pushing forward, getting back to the original line of scrimmage. About actually gain of about four yards for Churchill. It's like a big uh, third down and eight for us right here. About 554 in the uh, in the third quarter. Seems like we've had a pretty fast-paced uh, third quarter here. Yeah, time has dwindled pretty quickly. 
Going to the flats. That's Ringering. Breaks one tackle. Has some room to run. Trying to push forward, but not enough blockers on that side to really get anything going to get close to the first down marker, and that might bring on the punt team. Then again, you know, it's fourth and about four. What do you think? Looks Possibility like of a fake forward. here, possibly? Could be. The, looks like uh, he's got the punt team on. He's uh, counting them up, make sure we got enough guys on the field. You know, this... Haven puts everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Our, our uh, offense really got a block right here. It is a fake. They have enough blocking. Templeton brought down short right about to the line of scrimmage. That was a good observation. When you got that many guys coming after the punter, it's going to be tough to try to get around the corner. Yeah, we saw that the Lauren game. They brought uh, 10 guys, 10 and 11 guys at the punter, and Patrick took around the outside and tried the same thing again here tonight and uh, just didn't quite get the edge. Templeton on the carry. That's about his 11th carry of the day. And now Haven setting up shop in Ellenwood territory at about the 40-yard line. Defense going to have to clamp down here. Still a three-point game. Miller handoff around the outside. Regeer can't be finally brought down at about the line of scrimmage. and Man, he's a shifty back, that's for sure. Very shifty. That's probably the best job tonight we've uh, held him up on that play right there. Had enough early. defenders following the ball, it seemed like. Four and a half to play in the third quarter. Haven still trying to decide what they're going to do here on second and about 12. Regeer with his first negative yardage of the game. Only about his fourth carry, but man, he's racked up the yards. Up the middle again. This time it's Hendrickson. Hendrickson on the carry. Good job by our defense. Looks like uh, Cameron Williamson on the tackle there. Coach Bean clapping his team on. Uh, signaling plays now. A much better job defensively the second half. Absolutely. It seemed a little more focused. And no matter what Haven does, where they, they're on the field, Ellenwood playing a good old-fashioned defense following the football. See if they go to the air here on third and ten. About three and a half to play in the third. Oh, no. Going to be offsides, looks like, on Ellenwood. Well, encroachment. And the that'll help him out, make it third and five. Put the ball at the 35, will be third down five for the, for the Wildcats. But Matt, our, uh, just to bring up something, we've talked a little about cross country and our tennis team, our uh, volleyball girls uh, this past week on the varsity level went one and one, and the junior varsity went three and oh in their tournament. You know, Ellen Wood, with the size of the school, about most people probably involved in athletics of some sort this time of year. Yeah, that's, penalty flat. That's something we uh, we try to do as a school is get all our kids involved in something, whether it be sports or debate, forensics, cheerleading. Just uh, there's ways to get involved. Now we got the video production going on, so we involve you know even more kids and uh, just like like tonight, we've got a couple of kids down here helping us out that are volunteering their time and and you know spend five, six, seven hours uh, putting this together. And the cool thing is, it seems like everybody's supporting each other in each activity. You know, whether it be cross country or tennis or football here, a decent turnout for the hour and a half trip to Haven. Another penalty looked like it was on Ellenwood, makes it a third and short. Direct snap, a handoff to, that's number 30, Hendrickson. Nobody really followed him except for Templeton. Templeton got a good hold of him, though, a nice tackle he's left all by himself taking on the strong Hendrickson picking up a gain of about oh six or so and not for the first down to Haven to move the chains yeah Allen uh, held him up and then we had two or three later come in and make the tackle but good job Allen's a very strong kid doing a nice job coming up from the free safety position so to come make that play that something was nice to see under three minutes in the third quarter and Haven just running the football outside that's Miller with the option he's gonna keep it Brought down with a solo tackle by a Churchill, it looks like. Brought down by Churchill after about a six-yard game. Yeah, about a six-yard pickup for Miller. Second down and long four for the Wildcats. 
Set up once again, third and four. Excuse me, second and four. Flags on the the field and tripped up is Miller. Or no, that was Regeer. Nice to see him tripped up for once and another uh, loss of yardage. Absolutely. We think we're trying to figure this kid, this uh, guy out. We, uh, we uh, a little bit distracted up here in the booth. We've got uh, Haven does a nice job of sending food up our way. And uh, we've got hot dogs, hamburgers, everything going on right now. Yeah, well, I guess it's going to be a penalty on Haven. It sounded like Haven Crowd was reacting to a penalty on Ellenwood, but apparently not. Another flag thrown here. And oh, no, this might be on Dusty Beams by his reaction. Oh, no, this would not be good timing for an unsportsman. Oh, no. So that probably giving them a first down for Haven. Well, they had the penalty to back Haven up and give him a chance to stop him. And now Haven, given the first down, they march right into the red zone. About the 15-yard line for the Wildcats. And now the defense is really backed up at this point with about 2.13 left in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Direct handoff up the middle. And scampering away is Hendrickson. Tim Hendrickson. He has Haven snuck away down. from the defense there and got in the end zone. 14 yards. He sure did. Time. I thought we had him for a five guard or yeah. five guard Tim loss Tim and uh, getting up to celebrate and all of a sudden he squirts through. He said Haven does a good job of hiding the football. Makes it tough for our Illinois defenders. Well, Zach Hendrickson Zach with the touchdown. score and Take 158 two. left makes it 25 to 16, a two possession game now. Ellen Wood in a hole in the third quarter and the extra point up and good, making it 26 to 16. A 10 point extra lead for Haven good. now. See if Ellen Wood can regroup. So they're down by 10. You're tuned in, Ellen Wood Eagle Football at EllenwoodEagles.org and GreatBenPost.com. Woodhaven Care Center is a small, quiet, skilled nursing care facility with independent living apartments available. Located in the rural community of Ellenwood, we're confident that the hardworking staff will provide a safe and caring environment for you or your loved one. Stop by Woodhaven for a complimentary tour today. Armax Truck and Equipment is your bumper-to-bumper -bumper auto parts store specializing in truck repair and parts. Armax Truck and Equipment is a proud supporter of the Ellenwood Eagles academics and sports. For truck repair and parts, see Armax Truck and Equipment, Ellenwood. Pit Stop Service Station at 201 East Santa Fe in Ellenwood is your one stop for oil changes, tire repairs, exhaust systems, brakes, transmission work, tune-ups, new tires, and more. Open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to noon on Saturdays. Pit Stop Service Station. Eastern Plumbing, Electric, Heating, and Air is your authorized carrier dealer. Residential or commercial, Eastern can service and repair all makes and models. Call 620-564-3377. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Eastern in Ellenwood. Well, the kickoff brought back to uh, nearly the 35-yard line for Ellenwood is where they'll start this series right here. 152 left in the third quarter after the uh, touchdown scamper by Hendrickson. About a 14-yard touchdown run puts Haven up 26-16. to Ellenwood starting at the 35-yard line. Let's see if they can answer with the score on this drive. Definitely the most critical uh, offensive possession tonight for the Eagles. Need to go down here and uh, get a score. Well, they've done a pretty good job running the ball, but one thing that's hampered them so far is the the uh, penalties and a nice grab from Cameron Williams mixing in the throwing game for a pickup of about 15 yards. That was a great call because they, they, Ellen Woods ran that two or three times. Fake the uh, bubble screen out here to Patrick Ringer Ring, and, and then uh, that defensive player bites on that. Throw it to Cameron going down the middle. Good, good throw by Jared. Really nice to get the sizable uh, Cameron Williams a little more involved as in the the air attack can be a, a really good weapon as long as you can get the ball over to him. And, uh, you know, tonight's been a really good night for Jared Olke. He's had six completions tonight, had plenty of time to throw the football and uh, plenty of running so he doesn't have to carry the football team with the air attack. Templeton on the run up the middle for a gain of about three or four. 
Carey. Absolutely. We just need Jared to be an Tackle efficient quarterback two, for us, and he's, he's sure doing that tonight. He's, he's got you know enough of a threat. The defense has got to play him three. honest. Second, down seven. second and seven. Well, really, the offense has been very balanced. Everyone's gotten a share of the load here. And probably continue to do so. Second and seven. Might stick to the ground here. Oh, might be offsides, and it is on Haven, I believe. Should be. I think we're in uh, some turn about second and uh, two. If that's the call. Fit, just under a minute to play here in the third quarter. No, they're going to say false oh. start on Ellenwood. False start on the Eagles. That was right, uh, right in our line. We don't usually get that angle, uh, Matt, but I did not see anybody on our team jump on that play. So, yeah. But uh, maybe they saw something leaning back and forth. Yeah, I guess we, the Zebras got a little better uh, view than we do down yeah, there. I guess so. Uh, of course, Cody, Cody Woldruff probably has got a better view as well. Now back into Ellenwood territory. Back to throw is Olke. To the right side. Overthrow and picked off. Picked off by number three, by number three Cody, Cody Crabtree, Crabtree, the junior. There's but a penalty a flag in the backfield. We'll see what it is. Might be holding. We'll, yeah, well, it's Illegal going to be on. The Eagles. Illegal shift on Ellenwood. That's a big turn of events. Yeah, just Jared just overshot him by about a yard there and end up in the defensive back. Free safety is hands. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a well-thrown ball just off target. Had a nice drive going, and then the turnover coming into play. But that's one thing that Coach Dusty Beams talked about, that Ellenwood has done a really good job of winning the turnover battle. And I, I believe they're still in the positives on that in this game, but that's a big one right there with the 10-point deficit. Haven setting up at about the 35-yard line up. Going around the outside, that's Miller. A flag on the play as well and tackled from behind by Ezern. We're going to have a, a clipping call down here on number one. Um, Dalton on uh, Haven. Yeah, clipping it is and they'll march it on back. So fortunate again. Haven, that's been one of the... Uh, Things that stopped them quite a bit tonight, too. Both offenses, really. That's been a, a drive killer. And hopefully Ellenwood hoping to execute here and take advantage of these penalties here. Block on the back. Ten-yard penalty for a block in the back. About 30 seconds down left down in the third quarter before they switch sides for the fourth. Yes, sir. 26-16, Haven on top. Here we go, Haven. Yes, sir. Going around, option left side. That's Regeer. No, it's not Regeer. That's number 12. Fritz Meyer. Breaking off on the sideline. How they slip away. It seems like they've done that quite a bit tonight. Wow, that. Uh, I thought we had him for about a five yard loss. Ends up getting about seven yards on the play. Looks like we got a few tired defensive linemen that. Uh, place like that wear them out that's for sure well you know fatigue we thought it might be a factor here tonight looking at the size of each team end of the third quarter going into the fourth we'll discuss that after we take a quick break you're tuned in to ellenwood eagle football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com Dr. Christopher Brown, along with Dr. Charlie Jocelyn, is now accepting new patients at the Ellenwood Hospital Clinic. The Ellenwood Hospital Clinic is fully staffed Monday through Friday to promote your good health. Just like the student athletes at Ellenwood High School, Lang Diesel is doing what it takes to get the job done. See all the staff for new products, parts, or service at Lang Diesel, just west of Ellenwood, and good luck, Eagles, from your friends at Lang Diesel. When you think of your future, think Barton. When you think of career training, think Barton. When you think about completing your GED or getting specialized training for your business and employees, think of Barton. Find out what drives you at Barton Community College. Woodhaven Care Center is a small, quiet, skilled nursing care facility with independent living apartments available. Located in the rural community of Ellenwood, we're confident that the hardworking staff will provide a safe and caring environment for you or your loved one. Stop by Woodhaven for a complimentary tour today. 
to kick off the fourth quarter. Haven up by 10, 26 to 16. They've got the football as well at their own well, uh, 38 yard line. Looks like a false start going to be called on Haven again. There's been a lot of penalty flags here this beginning of the end of the third quarter, uh, beginning of the fourth here. Now Haven marching back. Yeah, Matt, this has probably been what the most penalized, uh, at least half that we've seen, I believe, uh, this year. It just kind of looks like two tired teams or two teams that playing a little bit sloppy. Second and 12. Hard to tell who has the football. I believe it was handed off up the middle. Snuffed out by Marcus Brown along with uh, I think it was Cole Templeton. Churchill. Yep. Yeah, Churchill. And I think Templeton was in there as well. Gain of about one, third and nine now. We are in the fourth quarter, dire times for Ellenwood. They're down by two possessions, down by 10. Defense trying to stop Haven here to get the ball back to try to get some more points on the board. Oh, snuffed out. Great tackle by Marcus Brown with the sack. That was a huge play right there. Get the ball back early in the fourth quarter. Force a fourth down and punt. Uh, good play for the Eagles. Now it wouldn't be a terrible time for a run back here either. That's right. We, you know we haven't seen a. Have we had a bad snap on the opponent. Maybe we could use one of those right now. That'd be good too. Templeton and Ring Ring in the backfield. Haven't really seen much of Ring Ring the second half either. I doubt they'd punt to him though. Not intentionally, anyways. But wow, a booming kick and Templeton having to run back on it. Be careful there. Picks it up. Somehow able to pick up some more yardage and gets it to, uh, past the 40-yard line. Not a terrible return for what he was playing with there. That was a nice punt by uh, the Haven Wildcats right there. Probably one of the best punts we've seen this year. And a good job by Alan Templeton of keeping his composure when the ball's on the ground, picking it up, getting some positive yards out of it. 10.36 left in the ball game. And an important drive for Ellenwood, you know. Plenty of time left, but with how Ellenwood's offense has been operating tonight, it takes a lot of time off the clock to move the ball. You want to be sure you get in the end zone or something here. Olke to throw. Plenty of time. That one batted away and intercepted. That one tipped off. and Now running with this one is number 38 with the interception. T.J. Deckless. And uh, that's really got the crowd rejuvenated they're ecstatic at this moment as they're getting their first taste of a win they got heartbroken last week against lions in an overtime loss and now they're up by double digits and with 10 24 left in the fourth quarter their team has the football and at this point if you're haven you might think about running the ball as much as possible and milking some clock here yeah i think we're probably gonna see that at haven <clears throat> be nice to get a uh, ellen wood uh some uh, a turnover right here get a, get the ball back that's the second interception of the night for Olke. He's been asked to throw the ball a lot more tonight. And good play. Now a push forward for a gain. It looked like they were going to stop him at the line of scrimmage there, but sometimes hard to tell where the ball is. Hendrickson with the carry, it looks like. Zach Hendrickson with the carry. Gain of about one yard for Hendrickson. Just one over ten game. minutes to play. I think it looks like Haven's taking their time, uh, sending the play in. They're going to take as much time off the clock as possible right now with uh, under 10 minutes to go. Ellenwood, I believe, has all three timeouts, which they're going to hold on to and need whenever they have the football if it comes down to the wire. Miller trying to sneak one away and might have dove no forward to the line of scrimmage. No gain, maybe a loss of one. We'll see where they spot him. Now they're going to give him a loss of about three, actually. Looked like a pretty good spot for the Eagles. I did that. He was going to get up there uh, inside the first down marker. Maybe his knee fell down a little a few steps prior to where he fell down. Third and 12. Big play for the Ellenwood defense. They can stop him here. Give the Ellenwood offense another shot. Again, Haven taking their time. Just over nine minutes to play. And now they're huddled back up again. Well, there's no. They're going to call timeout. There's no way they can get this off. 
This should be, yep, it's a penalty. Well. Delay of game against the Wildcats. You know, probably take that if you're Ellenwood at this point. Push them back, make it even tougher of a third down. But, you know, they do have that X factor of Regeer. Be looking for Trey Laguerre on this play. He's the one to break off a 20-yarder or, or more. Absolutely. They may, want, they may not want to uh, throw the football and stop the clock. They may just run the ball around the outside with their Regeer. Now they set up shop in a timely fashion. Handoff up the middle. Hendrickson, I believe. No, Miller pitch back to Regeer. Here he goes. Off to the races. And he is gone. Well, there is a flag in the backfield. 52-yard touchdown run for Regeer, but we'll see what the call is from the umps. Well, the referees have to say. Wow. Wow, legal procedure. That is huge. Brings back a 52-yard touchdown run. And False start against the Wildcats. Very fortunate for Ellenwood. And, you know, the Haven crowd ecstatic after that play, and now they're just a little bit heartbroken. They're sitting back down, so good chance for Ellenwood to quiet the crowd a little bit. And now another third and long, but again... Watch out for Regeer on this play. 8.38 remaining in the ballgame. Might be nice if we can uh, stop him right here and go down and uh, get back get back in the ball game. That would take a huge play off the board. They need a stop here. You're right. Around the outside. That's number 12. Uh, Fritz Meyer up the field. Oh, no. He might have broken one away. It's only Templeton can stop him in the Austin end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. No flags on the field here. That just makes for a longer touchdown run for a Haven. Man, big plays have really hurt Ellenwood tonight. Yeah, they really have. They uh, Haven's got some uh, speed with their skill guys. When they do get uh, five yards down the field, they, uh, they seem to be gone. 57-yard touchdown trot for Fritz and Meyer, and that puts... Haven up even bigger. Injury. injury timeout apparently on the field, well off the field, but they're still going to stop play as trainers look at them. 825 left in this one. 32 to 16 now. Uh, Haven doubling up the Ellenwood Eagles with 825 left in this one. Yeah. Now we're waiting for the setup of the PAT and we'll take a quick break while we're waiting on the injury timeout. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Eagle Football on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. It's homecoming week for the Ellenwood Eagles. The Eagles will entertain the Cardinals from El Saline this coming Friday night. Join us for Ellenwood Eagle Football on greatbenpost.com. Cheyenne Trailer Sales has all sizes and models of trailers from Diamond T Heavy Haulers, Car Haulers, Hydraulic Dump Trailers and Cargo Trailers, Stock Trailers, Utility Trailers. Central Kansas Trailer Supermarket is Cheyenne Trailer Sales, located in Great Bend and Ellenwood. It's all something. For all of your insurance needs, whether it's home, auto, live farm, or business, Jensen Associates. See Rob Fisher for a quote at Jensen Associates, Ellenwood. It's always something. Carmax Truck and Equipment is your bumper-to-bumper -bumper auto parts store specializing in truck repair and parts. Carmax Truck and Equipment is a proud supporter of the Ellenwood Eagles academics and sports. For truck repair and parts, see Carmax Truck and Equipment, Ellenwood. Well, after the injury timeout, the PAT field, uh, kick was blocked. Leaving the score at 32 to 16. 825 left in this one, and Ellenwood in a big hole. And you know, after a couple interceptions, that's been the source of the turnovers here tonight, Bill Matty. But you know, with the time remaining and the deficit that Ellenwood has of 16 points, you kind of have to keep going to the air a little bit. Yeah, that and that's unfortunate because that's really not uh, what Ellenwood does best, but. Uh, we're going to have to use this uh, last part of this fourth quarter probably to uh, figure out some ways to, to 
get the ball in there, try to score a little bit faster. It has been a, a patient offense tonight. It was pretty effective in the first uh, half as they scored all 16 of their points in the first half. It's silenced here in the second. And you wonder, Bill, if the Teague has been a factor tonight. You look at the Haven sideline, and they have about double the amount of players on the sideline, uh, at least 50 kids going out for football this year. And Ellenwood looking a little shallow there. And this was kind of a factor against TMP as well. You saw a decent first half, and then they kind of fell off in the second. Right, because, uh, you know, I think Ellenwood uh, has really hung in there and then this is last part of this uh, uh, fourth quarter here. Just probably got a little bit too tired. Deep kick. Ring ring will get it off the tip. Around the left side. Wow, there he goes up the sideline. That will help. He might be gone. To the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Patrick Ring Ring. Touchdown, Ring Ring. About wow. a... 82-yard scamper for Patrick ring ring and that'll put Ellenwood right back in the football game. Matt, this game, I, we, we talked about it being a wild one from the very beginning, and it sure has been, and, and it continues to be. Just what the doctor ordered. Patrick ring ring has not been, we haven't called his name very much here in the second half, but he makes his own play right there and picks his team, takes his team on his back and, Carries him to the end zone and might put, puts him within 10 at this moment. We'll see what happens on the two-point conversion. Could make it a one-possession game with the two-point conversion here. Olke set up. Hand off to Ring Ring up the middle. Oh, he might have been stopped shy. It'll stay a 10-point game. So still a two-possession game, but... Really gets uh, the Ellenwood side revived and a little more morale boost. 32-22, to 22, Ellenwood down by two with 8-11 remaining. We'll take a quick break. You're tuned in to Ellenwood Football on EllenwoodEagles.org. It's homecoming Great. week for the Ellenwood Eagles. The Eagles will entertain the Cardinals from El Saline this coming Friday night. Join us for Ellenwood Eagle Football on GreatBenPost.com. For generations, Ellenwood residents have counted on the Ellenwood Leader for news and information about the community. The Leader and the Central Kansas Rocket cover the topics that are important to residents of Eastern Barton County. Start your subscription today or pick up the latest copy at the Ellenwood Leader office. The Rocket is free. Extreme savings at Next Tech Wireless. Now receive $50 off any phone, including the new HTC Merge, the Motorola Milestone Plus, and the HTC 7 Pro. You'll also receive $60 off an additional line. That's six months free. Next Tech Wireless has added more towers, offering even better coverage in Kansas and across the entire United States. Visit your local Next Tech Wireless store for extreme savings throughout the month of September. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, your covered nationwide. Ellenwood with a squib kick coming off the kickoff and sets up Haven at about the 36-yard line. Uh, an 82-yard kickoff return by Patrick Ringering might put Ellenwood back in this one. It's a 10-point game now, 32-22. Looked like the Ellenwood Eagles are a lot more fired up going out and make a tackle right there. Haven did, uh, they kicked the ball to, on uh, Patrick's one, uh, return exactly to the person we wanted it to. We'll see what Haven answers with on their first play. Up the middle, but snuffed out. No, off to the side. Miller with the keeper, a good fake. Keeper by Miller. Ten-yard pickup for Miller. And dwindling down as well. They had to go to the air a little more. Yeah, they sure did, and it just uh, didn't play very well in Ellenwood's uh, favor doing that. It's just unfortunate because I thought we uh, come out and dominated really the, that first quarter, just moving the ball offensively. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you know, it's you're going to get five yards, you're going to get ten yards or fifteen. What's it going to be? But we're going to get something uh, big and positive, and, and then uh, the score seemed like a little bit uh, misleading of, uh, of our efforts, especially the first three quarters. 32 to 22 your final score haven coming away with the victory next week back at home against ellen or against southeast of saline and uh, hopefully a better effort and a better outcome there at home uh, next week again final score tonight haven with the victory 32 
and uh, over Ellen Wood, who scored 22 in the end. For Bill Matty, I'm Matt Unruh. Uh, thanks for tuning in to your iHi broadcast on ellenwoodeagles.org and greatbenpost.com. See you next week.